Hello, everybody. It's Jeff Keeley, and welcome to this special Xbox game showcase and our pre-show here leading up to the big main showcase that happens in one hour at the top of the next hour. Uh, welcome to YouTube Gaming and our exclusive coverage. This obviously is uh, a different year for all of us in 2020, and normally every year I love getting together with, with everyone around the world to watch all the E3 events, but this year, of course, uh, given where the world's at, we're doing things virtually. Uh, before we get into this, I certainly want to acknowledge uh, everything that is still happening around the world with the COVID pandemic, um, and certainly hope everyone is safe and uh, feeling okay today and excited about video games, which uh, I think have been a source of comfort for many of us in 2020. So today is really about celebrating games and the future of games and where games are going um, in the future. You know, this is still a big year for games and that new consoles are launching. And today is all about Xbox and the Xbox Series X, which is coming out this holiday season. Although today is less about hardware and is going to be more about the games. And in our pre-show, we've got a lot of great guests joining us to preview what we expect from Xbox. We also have some world premieres and some great new game stuff to show you guys as well. Uh, the Xbox story for Series X, of course, started last year at the Game Awards when we revealed the Xbox Series X hardware on stage. I, uh, I certainly miss memories of thousands of people together and the excitement of shocking the world with that announcement last year. Uh, that was such a special moment that no one had any clue it was about to happen and we revealed the hardware there. Um, but of course, everyone wants to know about the games that are going to run on the system. And today is all about a game that was sort of mentioned in that teaser, Halo, Halo Infinite. We are going to get a first look at the gameplay of the campaign of Halo Infinite in the Xbox Game Showcase. Um, that's something that we're all very excited to see. I'm sure we'll be talking about that a lot over the next hour. Uh, and Xbox has already said, we're not gonna hear a lot about hardware today. We don't expect to hear the release date for Series X. We don't expect to hear about pricing. Um, it really is gonna be a showcase all about games and focused a lot more on their first party studios, meaning games that are coming exclusively um, to the Xbox ecosystem, which of course includes Game Pass and PC and even xCloud. Um, there's, there's a lot to talk about kind of what Xbox is doing with gaming and their approach. Um, so we've got some world premieres for you and we've got a lot of guests. So let's get ready for the countdown here. 58 minutes away from the show. Uh, before we get to our first world premiere though, I want to welcome some panelists to talk about what we're expecting today from Xbox. So first up joining me is my good buddy, Jack Septic Eye. Jack, welcome to the show. Hi, it's good to be here. Hi. Thankfully, it's, it's great a to have reasonable you here hour. early in the morning in Los Angeles. We've yeah. also got Lauren Side here. Lauren, how are you? Hey, good. <laughs> how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Good to see you as well. And finally, we've got a guy who uh, who got to go up to Microsoft and check out the Xbox Series X hardware before lockdown. Austin Evans. Austin, good to have you with us, man. Hey, Jeff. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, great to have all you guys here. So. Let's kick things off here by talking about what you want to see from Xbox today. Uh, you know, they had an event back in May that people wanted to see even more um, from. They wanted to see, you know, more gameplay, more games. They wanted to see Halo. They're going to deliver that today. Uh, what are your expectations as as fans of games? What what do you want to see at the top of the hour from Xbox? Let's let's start with you, Jack. Um, well, I mean, our, the big elephant in the room, the big chief elephant in the room is everyone just wants to see Halo Infinite. And I'm, I'm really curious because I'm not the biggest Halo fan, but this even this one has kind of gotten me intrigued and excited. So I'm curious to see about that. I want to see more Hellblade 2 if we're going to get some of that, because when we saw that trailer at the Game Awards and we were sitting in that theater and that music kicked in and rocked everyone's socks, I was really impressed with that and seeing what the hardware could kind of do in engine there. Um, I'm a sucker for FromSoft games. I... My heart's going to be broken when we don't see Elden Ring today, but it's been so long since it was announced. I need to see it somewhere and see that it's, it still exists. And as long as I get a good world premiere, I'll be happy. Oh, wait, wait, well, wait. we got the world premiere voice guy actually doing the voice here when we come to our first oh world God. premiere. Oh, my God. It's Christmas. I'm here, here to take, <laughs> take care of you. But yes, as you said, um, you know, everyone would love to see Elden Ring. Everyone would love to, to see new game announcements, too. Um, you mentioned Halo. Lauren, is that is that the big thing for you? Like seeing Halo, what are you excited to see? No, so I feel like Halo okay. was like my first introduction into 
like first person shooter games and why I should not play them because I'm horrible at them. But that was like my first, it holds a special place in my heart because like that was the first time realizing I was terrible at them. Um, I'm really excited. I'm big into like psychological horror games. Uh, so the medium, I really, really want to see more uh, about. I want to see gameplay. They haven't told us a whole lot about it, um, but I'm, I'm living for it. Like the Silent Hill music, everything. Um, and Everwild is the other one I'm really interested uh, for, like to see more about, because both of those are kind of a mystery. I haven't I haven't seen much on them. Oh, that that's great, because as you said, there are lots of other games across the studios. Everwild that they teased last year at EXO from Rare looked really interesting. I agree. Hopefully we'll get to see something on that. Tim Schafer's got uh, Psychonauts that, you know, they acquired that studio. Hopefully there'll be an update on that one. And, and as you said, Microsoft's got so many studios, so many games um, across the portfolio that I think we'll get hopefully some new game announcements and also some updates on those existing ones. Um, Austin, you are one of the, the few people, I think, in the world that, uh, you know, got to check out uh, Series X. You got, I remember you did, sort of, you, know, you got to check out Gears, how that was looking on the hardware and everything like that. So you have a really interesting perspective on this. Um, what do you want to see at Xbox today? So, I mean, I love the nerdy details, right? I want to see the 120 FPS and the HDR and the, all the, the ray tracing. I'm really interested in seeing kind of like what this next generation is able to do as far as pushing the envelope forward, right? I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I'm going to be all over Halo. I really want to see what they're able to do, especially considering that that's going to be a game that will be on Xbox One and sort of so maybe PC and Series X and kind of seeing how they're able to stretch that. And I'm definitely a huge fan of the Forza franchise, right? I mean, that's sort of been really, you look back at the Xbox One generation for me, I have definitely spent more time playing for the Forza games as well as the Horizon games more than anything else, right? So that uh, definitely has like a special place in my heart from the gaming side. But what I'm really curious about is getting a really good look at kind of what this new slate of titles look like, right? I mean, obviously we know that there are a bunch of games that are coming out sort of holiday season. I'm assuming we're probably going to see some games kind of teased for the next maybe year or two or whatever the case is. But I really want to see a good sense of what the Xbox Series X is capable of, right? I've seen little bits and pieces. I got to try a couple of tech demos. I know the specs. I know all the kind of the, the basic stuff. But what I really want to do is kind of see how all of that comes together and brings what this next generation is all about. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. It's, you know, they keep saying how powerful this console is. Like, we want to see that power, right? And see what this is able to do. And Microsoft's philosophy on Xbox that Phil Spencer has expressed is, you know, a little bit different than PlayStation. That They're saying that all these games are going to show you today conceivably will still work on your current Xbox, will work on PC, and they might, you know, they work better on the new Xbox. But I'm curious for you guys, um, you know, how does that affect your sort of, decision on what you're going to do with Xbox, like what's going to cause you to, to want to upgrade to the next system? Because it's it's different that, you know, Halo, as you said, will work probably on, if you have an Xbox right now, it'll work on the current system. So I assume part of what they have to show today is why it's going to be even better on the next one. Yeah, I, mean, I think for definitely what I expect. Yeah, I think for me, what I what I like most about the Xbox that kind of sits at, in, in my house is like we always get Sony with their exclusives, and I would love to see some really cool exclusives come out of Microsoft today. It's the the, the thing that people keep talking about all the time. But I love uh, the kind of home entertainment aspect of my Xbox. I love the the kind of UI and the the, the speed of the system and kind of sitting down. I use it for everything. I, I only use my PlayStation for gaming, but I really use my Xbox for almost everything. I, I watch Netflix on it. I watch movies and I play my my 4K Blu-rays and everything on it because my my PlayStation couldn't do that. So I, I'm really curious to see how they evolve kind of the, the OS of the system and make it snappier and faster and how you're able to switch between games on the fly and being able to have all of those old games be playable on the new one. They keep talking about backwards compatibility a lot and how that's a big factor for them. And I'm curious to see how far that goes and how many games you can really play with that and how far they're pushing it and stuff like Game Pass has come out and it's it's kind of a game changer because there's so many times when I just go on and I don't want to buy a new game, but I, it's, Game Pass is a good way of kind of trying it out and testing it and just downloading it there and playing straight away. And I, I really love that aspect. So I want to see how far they push that and xCloud, I think is what their trump card will be this time, at least for me personally, the way I consume the, the media on my Xbox. 
Yeah, no, I yeah, think that, I, as you said, the Game Pass is another big part of it that, you know, a lot of these games now come out as part of Game Pass. Like Microsoft has said, kind of all their first party titles are are in Game Pass. And that, I think, lets people sample more games, right? It's no longer like you have to spend $60 to to play everything. Um, Austin, I wanted to ask you about the the specs and the, you know, the frame rates and all that type of stuff. You know, you live in the world of, of tech and, you know, RDNA architectures and whatnot. Like, what do you think... What does that all mean to the gamers? Like, how do you think the games are going to be different? Or what are the things we should look for here in, you know, ray tracing and things like that? Like, what do you think are going to be some of the big leaps that we're going to see um, in some of these games, hopefully, today? So I think the interesting way of looking at sort of the previous generation, sort of Xbox One, PS4, going into this new generation is that it's a much more well-rounded package, right? So you look at something like the Xbox Series X, spec-wise, it is equivalent to a very high-end gaming PC. That's not something we've seen in the console space for a long time, right? You look at the Xbox One, it had good graphics, right? It was able to provide some really impressive games. You look at something like Red Dead 2 running on an original Xbox One, it's really impressive that that was able to be sort of accomplished. But the thing is, this generation, with the Series X, we have not only the SSD, which I think people are going to very quickly get used to, not minute load times, but you know, a few second load times. But also you have that really powerful CPU, which is going to enable these bigger open worlds, sort of more interesting looking physics. And then you have on the graphics side, not only sort of more detailed things. And I think the higher frame rates are something that, especially as more and more TVs are developing that sort of tech that people are going to really start to appreciate. But also these new features like ray tracing, right? Which are just going to help ground these worlds in a much more sort of realistic sort of location. Like I guess for me, it's more about making the console a much more complete package, right? You're not sort of sacrificing because you're playing on your PC versus your Xbox or anything. Like, you're going to be getting a very similar level of performance. In a lot of cases, something like the Series X is going to be significantly more powerful than any other gaming device in your home. Yep. All right. Well, hopefully we're going to get to see some of that. Uh, Lauren, you, you get the last word here. Anything you're hoping is a surprise today? You talked about some of the games we know about, like the Medium and Everwild. Anything that you're secretly hoping they, they show here in some way? Ah, uh, I, 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 you know, I was looking yesterday to see if there was anything I could think of that like they could surprise me with. Um, I've personally been more of like PC gamer, uh, PlayStation. So if they can surprise me and pull me in with more like Xbox exclusive exclusives. Um, yeah. I mean, Game Pass has been a game changer for me. I've been using that a lot lately. Um, so just like bringing me into that ecosystem, if they can do that, like then they've they've surprised me so <laughs> no and that's that's part of what they're trying to do here is you yeah. said you know you can play all this stuff on your pc you can play you know on your phone via x cloud and like you know bringing more games to more people so as you said hopefully we'll see a bunch of games today right and we know halo is going to be a big focus um but obviously they've got a lot of other things to uh, to fill out that hour all right well uh Thanks, uh, Lauren, Austin, and uh, Jack. We will uh, see you guys uh, later. We'll all be watching live. Uh, and we do have some special world premieres uh, throughout this show. We've got a number. I think we've got over, I think, a half dozen things we're going to show you guys over the next uh, 45 minutes here to give you a little preview of some stuff that uh, will be coming to Xbox. And we're going to start right now uh, with this world premiere announcement. Check it out. World premiere. The reincarnation of the Luminary. Know this. The Luminary is the root of all evil and will bring naught but misery to our realm. A hero will surely arise to take the sword in hand once more. Domo, game designer no Horiyuu desu. 1986年に日本で第一作目となる ドローンクエストというロールペイングゲームを発売して、こっちで自分自身が主人公になって魅力あふれる仲間と共に世界を救う壮大な冒険のために出ます。
冒険の舞台はロッテ・ゼッタッシアというさまざまな地形がある広大な世界です街は武器を買ったりクエストを受けたりできる冒険の拠点です重要な話も聞けるでしょう「モンスターとのバトル」では戦士や魔法使い盗賊舞踏家などキャラクターの特性を生かした戦術で戦います出現するモンスターも可愛いものから恐ろしいものまで多くのモンスターがいます今戦闘しているスライムは一作目から登場している人気者なんですよその他にも昔懐かしい 2D モードや過去のシリーズの作品の世界を体験できるサブクエストなどのやり込む要素も満載ですいよいよ XBOX プラットフォームに登場する日本の RPG の音ドラゴンクエスト 11S をお楽しみください発売は2020年12月4日ですそれではまた There you go, Dragon Quest coming for the first time to Xbox. And now we're going to get right into another world premiere. This is a brand new game announcement.、Um, a smaller team and studio that has a new title to announce、uh, today on the pre show. So take a look at this. All right, that's Exomecha, a, a brand new free to play game、uh, coming、uh, in late 2021. And that's a first look at that.、Uh, we do have more new、uh, games and some cool stuff. We've got something very cool to wrap up the pre show as our last premiere that I'm really excited to share with you guys.、Um, so stick around. And of course, at the top of the hour, we're going to get a look at a lot of the first party games、uh, from Microsoft, including. The world gameplay debut of Halo Infinite.、Uh, right now, though, we're going to turn to our second panel to preview what we're hoping,、uh, all our hopes and dreams for Xbox today.、Uh, joining me first off is Aaron Hansen from the Game Grumps. Aaron, you ready for blanks? <laughs> oh, dude, you're way ahead of me, brother. I was all like, all blinked stuff, and you just brought, I was gonna brought say, the heat, man. You've been waiting all summer for this moment. Will the time sweeper return? All right.、Uh, good to have you with us, Aaron.、Uh, we've got Danny O'Dwyer from、uh, No Clip. Hey, Danny. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm just really happy to, to, for、uh, Aaron to get his blinks. He's been waiting for like, what's it, was it a month since we child talked on PlayStation?、Uh, you know, forget all these, all these new studios and all these new games that all their acquisitions are going to do. It's, it's all about the blinks. Bring back the time sweeper, right? That's, that's clearly the closer of the show, right? You must know something.、Uh, <laughs> and finally, we've got Alana Pierce joining us. Hey, Alana. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. All right, you're all chipper. We're ready to go. This is Xbox、mm -hmm. Day.、Um, Going to be hopefully some excitement、um, for all of us、uh, with what Xbox has in store. So we joked about、uh, Blinks, but Xbox has. A lot of franchises, a lot of history in gaming over the past、uh, 20 years. I'm going to open with the same question I had for the last panel. What are your hopes? What are your expectations? What, what do you want to see from Xbox in this next hour that's going to you know, convince you that、uh, they've got a lot of great stuff and、uh, you know, charting the future of gaming?、Uh, Aaron, let's take Blinks off the table. Beyond that, what <laughs> else can they do for you today? 
Uh, well, you know, if I'm going to be honest, man, I want to know what the heck's going on with Exomecha, because that, like, I was not expecting something like that, and holy That's crap. That's a transformer that, like, action? That appealed to, like, my 80s, early 90s culture mind. I was just like, it's just big silver robots punching each other, and there's a robot dragon, I guess, that breathes <laughs> fire? Great, I'm in. Let's do it. All right, so Exo Mecca clearly at the top of, top of the pile. They've already won you over, Danny. Uh, you know, you visit a lot of studios around the world when we can. Um, hear about them. Uh, you know, hear their stories. No clip. You do some incredible documentaries. Uh, from your perspective, like, what does Xbox? What does Xbox have to do today? What do you want to see in this hour showcase? Well, we've had uh, Microsoft, uh, you know, doing a lot of acquisitions over the past couple of years um, and a lot of studios that were sort of working on games, perhaps, or working on smaller games for them. So I think what I'm excited for today is for a bunch of those studios to maybe show something off. So one studio we visited earlier this year uh, was Obsidian, who uh, were working on Grounded. They've uh, been acquired by Microsoft in the interim um, or just prior to that. So uh, I'm interested to see if we'll see what everyone hopes, which is a big budget obsidian role-playing game um that's kind of on my top list of uh things i'd like to see and then the other one is what's happened to fable obviously in the past couple of you know lionhead isn't around anymore and um, there's a lot of rumor that uh, playground who work on uh, the forza series may have sort of taken up the mantle on that and um, it's been rumored that they've been working on some sort of open world role-playing game as well so those are kind of the two that I'm looking to see. And just anything else from the rest of their acquisitions, like Double Fine. I'm sure they're not they're a small team, so I'm sure they're not running multiple projects. But, you know, you never know. Maybe they're an early concept phase on something. No, I think RPGs is a great uh, genre, right? Where it's like X Xbox has done lots of action games, but uh, doing RPG stuff, I think, is some, an opportunity for them um, to show some great stuff uh, in the RPG uh, genre. Uh, Alana, what's... Uh, you know, I know you've been fan fan of Gears. You've been fans of uh, you know. You're excited about Cyberpunk that's coming out. That obviously will be on all systems, but on Xbox as well. Um, what do you, what do you want to see from from Team Xbox this morning? Also, Blinks. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I I love Fable. I really want a new Fable. Like Danny said, uh, it's rumored that Playground Games are working on it, and I buy that rumor. They hired a lot of people from uh, a lot of studios known for making really big games, including Rockstar um, and Guerrilla. Uh, so I, I really, really, really want to see Fable. I love that world, and I feel like there's something so pleasant about a British RPG, like the the humor captured in the original Fable game. I just love so much, and obviously Peter Molyneux would no longer be attached, so that changes things, but... That's what I really, really want. Um, also really obviously excited to see more Halo. I'm very curious to see if any of the Perfect Dark rumors hold up because I also love Perfect Dark. Uh, but to get away from games hype, I really want to know more about xCloud. Um, I'm kind of hoping that we hear a little bit about, about xCloud and what they're planning to do with that in the future after that Game Pass announcement, which is super exciting. So those are my yep. big three. No, I think you're right. There's such an interesting story there around what's happening with Xbox Live, with Game Pass, this idea of, you know, having the, you know, a subscription sort of approach, right? Versus buying $60 games time and again. It seems like part of Microsoft's approach is, you know, very Netflix-like and that you're going to sort of get all these games, all this content. And that'll mean big games, but also, you know, potentially smaller games that people are more likely to sample, um, which I think is, you know, a huge opportunity here to see a diversity of content um, that, you know, there'll be some stuff for the super core gamers, but maybe some stuff that's a little broader in its appeal too. Um, let's talk about Halo. Uh, they've done a very good job over the past week, hyping everyone up around, uh, you know, Master Chief's return. Seems like a bit of a spiritual reboot in a way of Halo. I mean, we saw the kind of key art, the box art yesterday was like very reminiscent of the original Halo Combat Evolved. Um, we know we're going to see the campaign today. We saw, I think it was last year at E3, we saw kind of a, we've actually passed two E3s, we saw kind of teaser assets for Infinite. Uh, originally, we saw kind of the engine, and then last year, we saw, you know, sort of an, an in-game sequence, uh, or at least rendered in engine. Um, what do you guys, what are your hopes? What, what does Halo have to do, um, you know, Obviously, a legendary franchise. I think there's a big opportunity here for them, but it's a very competitive space uh, with first-person action games right now. Um, what do you want to see in a new Halo? What, what, what will convince you that uh, Halo's back on top? More Chief, less Locke. <laughs> That's my number one. Um, I think no, we'll I, get I that. 
Yeah, I think so too. I feel like that's that's something that they've really focused on. And I know that they got a lot of criticism for the story. And I'm actually, from what I've heard, uh, Halo Infinite's development got pushed a little bit because they reworked the narrative after people were so upset about the lock focus of the last game. Um, Halo is an interesting one in that I don't want it to shift too far from classic Halo because that's sort of been with me my whole life. Um, but I would also, same token, like a a story like an ODST. I really liked the way that that was told. Um, I feel like that's really unlikely, but I want a groundbreaking story. Uh, I want something that kicks me in the feels like Reach did or like ODST did. Um, but with the, the lore and the nerdiness of probably a Halo 2, just as long as Chief's with me the whole way, I'm going to be good, though. <laughs> Yes, as you said, a, very, you know, a, a focus on Master Chief. In terms of the, the style of gameplay, Danny, you know, we see kind of first-person games going in different directions, you know, with co-op, with other sort of you know, uh, aspects to it. The sandbox style of Halo is something that I think people really like, the, the skirmishes and whatnot um, in the gameplay. Do you think, does that still hold up in 2020? Or what do you, what do you when you see this demo or gameplay footage, what are you going to be looking for that's going to cue to you like, Halo's back. Yeah, I think that's the big sort of question on this. Um, when we first saw Infinite, it was around the time that that big sort of shift into games as a service was happening, um, where games like uh, The Division and, I mean, Destiny is obviously the the sort of most obvious one, were, were turning into these platforms that were getting catered to and new content over and over and over again. And obviously the word Infinite sort of implied something along those lines. Um, so I'm really interested to see you know, Halo, when it first came around and then when it had its sort of like soft reboot in a way with Halo 3, it's sort of like re-reemergence. I feel like it was very much a game that was pushing both single player and multiplayer and also just a lot of interconnectivity with different types of modes and stuff. So it's always been on this sort of bleeding edge of like gameplay design. Um, and the other side of it that I'm really interested in is just how the Slip Space engine works because they've had access to the hardware or they've known what the hardware was going to be like longer than anyone so really you know we always look at the forces as the you know beautiful showcases for new hardware but i think in the same way whatever we see from that gameplay is going to give us a real indication of just how good games can look on this system no that's a great point i think as you said this is hopefully going to be the high bar of you know what we can look for visually and in terms of gameplay and the experience with it uh Aaron, are you much much of a Halo guy besides the you know the blink skin or something like that? What, uh, <laughs> what what's going to convince you that uh, this is the first person action game to get? Well, you know, I for me, Halo's always all been about um, multiplayer, right? So like, I was never huge for the single player campaigns. I always played online, always played with friends, and the thing that I really hope is that there's sort of like a, a dedication to the old style of of halo right like i feel like every game nowadays is like heroes heroes this heroes that and i love overwatch but if we're playing halo i want to go back to deathmatch i want to go back to capture the flag king of the hill like i'm i'm way into that kind of gameplay so if they can like modernize that and make it still have that sort of you know like it, it feels new it doesn't feel like oh they're just re-releasing -re halo or like unreal tournament or something uh that's that's what i'm looking forward to is what what can they do with multiplayer i'll I take a re-release of unreal tournament <laughs> yeah there we go <laughs> well so i did like halo 5 multiplayer i was actually okay with that i am just more scared about kind of what you said danny that they're going to destiny -ify the single player campaign which is a very a profitable thing to do so mm -hmm. i get why studios want to do that but i'm scared <laughs> Yeah, I know you said how they blend single and multiplayer, and it sounds like they're talking about campaigns. I don't know if we're even going to get much on the multiplayer. So you said how that's all going to blend together and how they're going to kind of explain what it is, right? And that's part of the thing with these streams sometimes. We see lots of footage, but then we have all these questions afterwards about like, well, what is this? What, what are we actually seeing? Is that a co-op? Is that single player? Um, so we will have uh, Aaron Greenberg from Xbox is going to join us afterwards to break down some of what we see. And hopefully we'll get some information in the in the show as well about what they're doing with Halo. Uh, all right, guys. Well, well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we will all watch everything together here at the top of the hour. We are about 30 minutes away from the live Xbox game showcase uh, we don't know where it's going to start or where it's going to end, but the one thing we do know is that Halo Infinite is going to be there, and we've got the countdown clock up there as well, so uh, you guys can wait with us. But we've got much more to talk about, and we've got some more world premieres um, to show you guys. Right now, we've got an update on a game that is coming out later this year. You just saw it at Ubisoft Forward. Here's a new look 
at Watchdogs Legion. Ladies and gentlemen, London is fucked. But don't worry, we've got our best man on the case. Because if anyone can fix this mess, it's this smooth bastard super spy. Oh. Well, looks like we're recruiting. It's a state of emergency. Move in and lock down the city. In the chaos, private armies have taken the streets. Albion Security's contract has been extended indefinitely. A crooked spy agency lurks in the shadows. It's basic tradecraft. Want to sell a lie, weave it into the truth. And organised crime has grabbed the old city by the bollocks. The Kellys have got a human organ black market. No, but I've got to keep tracks on my merchandise, don't I? The government's literally letting Albion shoot us in the street. You need to build a resistance. Recruit anyone in the whole city. And I really mean anyone. Genius hackers. Hard grafters. Idiots. Everyday people with something to fight for. And something unique to offer. The right person for the job. Or the ones you least expect. The city needs a resistance. And it starts with you. What do you say? Yeah. I'm in. Welcome to the resistance. Faces on, guns out. It's about to get real. Find them. Recruit them. Welcome to the Resistance. All right, well, as we've mentioned quite a few times, we are going to get a first look at the campaign of Halo Infinite. And uh, I asked that... A friend of mine, what he wants to see in a brand new Halo. Uh, you may know Ninja for many things um, over the past few years, but he actually started uh, at, and created uh, quite a stir with all his awesome Halo gaming and gameplay uh, back in the day. So uh, without further ado, let's hear from Ninja about what he wants to see in a brand new Halo. Tyler, take it away. Thanks, Jeff. I'm excited to see what Xbox has in store. And here's what I want out of Halo. If Halo Infinite can just give us a incredible campaign to close out the, just the classic series uh, with a, a beautiful ending and a matchmaking slash multiplayer system where the ranking system is unique and it, it, it works and just really amazing iconic maps. I feel like a lot of people loved the Halo 1, Halo 2, and Halo 3 maps that came out they just felt so fun whether it be super bouncing from Halo 2 nad nading all the weapons off and learning all that in Halo 1 and just the flow of Halo 3 it was it was just something so incredible played all of them I love them all and if Halo Infinite can just get that down get some of those things down right give us amazing weaponry right weapon gameplay like the Halo 1 classic pistol the Halo 2 battle rifle the Halo 3 battle rifle and sniper I'm, I, I think they, it'll be in a really good spot, and I'm just excited to see what they have in store, man. Awesome. Well, we'll see how much of that comes true, hopefully, at the top of the hour when we get a look at Halo Infinite. Thanks to Ninja for joining us on the show. Now it is time to get to another world premiere, a net new game that you haven't heard about. And this one comes from my home country, my home province of Ontario, Canada. Uh, I saw this and, and got excited about just a brand new game from a smaller studio that you haven't heard about, but I think looks pretty cool. Check out this world premiere. Thank you. 
definitely some Stranger Things vibes to that one. Uh, Echo Generation with the Hockey Smash. Uh, they're exciting. All right, now it's time to get to another world premiere. Uh, check this out. Oh, wait, we got YouTube creators, first of all. Sorry, I, I get so excited. I think there are more world premieres coming. Um, we also, we do have more coming, don't worry. But right now, actually, we're going to hear from a number of YouTube creators uh, around the world to uh, hear what they're looking forward to uh, from Xbox, hopefully at the top of the hour. So let's check this out. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Garu, and I'm a content creator on YouTube. And today, I'm so much excited for this Xbox event because with this, we are going to get ourselves the brand new Halo stuff. And I used to play Halo back in 2011 and 2012, and I just used to spend hours and hours making a map on Halo 3 than actually playing the game. Me and my friends, we used to be like, okay, let's just put that over there, let's put this over there, and literally, we used to come back from school, and we used to mess around with maps and all that stuff, and it just used to be a fun game in general. Like, can, can anyone forget about the skulls? Like, we used to have to, like, go ahead and collect them, like... I could go in for hours on Halo, okay? Because with those skulls, we could actually go ahead and try out different stuff. And there used, just used to be so many variations in the game on its own. There used to be co-op, there used to be 1v1, King of the Hill, Juggernaut, and so many game modes in general. So I'm super excited for the brand new release of this game, because especially for content creators out there, there's going to be so much stuff to make content on, especially, you know, there's going to be campaign, and plus if you guys make content on multiplayer, we can go on replay file, on theater mode and capture some cool moments that we actually had in the game so i really wish in the brand new halo we get ourselves the co-op game mode with that you know the 1v1 still remains and all the fun game modes that we used to have in halo 3 i still wish those still remain because that will definitely bring back a lot of memories so yeah my name is garu and hopefully you guys are excited for this brand new game and for the event peace out hey guys middle jesus here now i vividly remember buying my very first xbox i have it right here it is the beautiful translucent Halo Edition Xbox. When I first saw this machine, I absolutely fell in love with it. So ahead of its time and so many great AAA games as well as hidden gems. And then when it came time for the Xbox 360, well, this was my machine of choice right here. I have the special edition E3 2005 faceplate on here. And check this out. This was back when you had to have an external Wi-Fi adapter it wasn't built into the machine, but man, I have so many great memories playing awesome games on this. Now, when it comes to the Xbox One, I'll admit I was a bit late to the party on that one, but I eventually did pick up the Xbox One X. You see the Gears edition here, and I have to say I was blown away by this. It's excellent hardware, and the games are absolutely amazing on it. And so, from what I've seen so far of the Xbox Series X, it appears that Microsoft's going all in on powerful hardware and performance, Plus they've added a bunch of first party developers over the last couple of years. And there is that awesome backwards compatibility, which is important for collectors like me. So yeah, I definitely think it's gonna be pretty cool and I wanna learn more. Hola amigas amigos, yo soy Antrax. Wow, Halo, que recuerdos tengo con este título, con este juego. Hizo mi infancia la más divertida de todas. Recuerdo que con el Halo 3 la campaña me la pasé en todos los modos posibles, en solitario y con amigos. Eh, el modo en línea, una chulada, lo mejor del mundo. Después con el Halo Reach lloré, lloré con la campaña, las cinemáticas son perfectas. Con Halo 4 recuerdo que mi primer trabajo, entré a trabajar para poder pagar el juego. Entonces eso, eso me ha causado una gran felicidad todo el tiempo con Halo Es un juego que hizo mi infancia, mi adolescencia Y estoy seguro que lo voy a jugar hasta que me muera Y lo que se viene con este nuevo título, nueva entrega Estoy seguro que va a ser lo mejor Hey Summer Game Fest audience, Lamar Wilson here, and here are the five games that I'm looking forward to them announcing today. So the first one is Halo Infinite. Now I came into Halo late with Halo 5. I know, I know. But I loved it so much and I can't wait to see what's next. Then there's a new game from Rare called Everwild. It just looks amazing and breathtaking. I have no idea what the game is about, but I want to see it. Number three, I definitely want to see a Gear 6. This is going to be a game really about revenge and taking the horde out at the center, at the literal core, hopefully for the final time. Now number four, since we're talking about Gears, why not a Lego's Gear Saga? You know, they, they did the Funko Pop thing on mobile, but what about Lego? Like, I would actually like to play that. So they need to announce that today. Now, finally, Cuphead 2. I know. Now, Cuphead 1 tore me a new one. It's one of the most unforgiving games ever. But for some reason, I just want more. Why do I want more? Man, am I crazy? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. 
Lamar, fully decked out his Xbox gear, ready for uh, the show. And it was so cool to have uh, gamers from around the world joining us from India and Mexico and obviously here uh, in the United States because one of the things I think we found this year more than ever is that games bring us together and uh, people are watching all around the world. So I want to say hello to everyone uh, watching this special event where hopefully we're all just going to be excited about games as we we watch through it. And the stream is coming up in about... 18 minutes. You can watch it live right here on this feed. We're going to go right into it. And then immediately afterwards, we've got our exclusive post show with guests, some of the developers featured in the showcase. And Aaron Greenberg from Xbox will be joining us to answer questions. And we'll also have some creators join us as well to uh, grade, see how Xbox did based on our expectations. And we'll also do a poll on Twitter. So make sure to vote on that. But right now, it is time to get to another world premiere. This is a sequel to a game that if you watch... Uh, YouTube Let's Plays and YouTube gaming videos you've probably seen. Check this out. There it is. Hello, neighbor two. Uh, and we've got some more games still to come. And we are 14 minutes away from the start of the showcase uh, from Xbox. It's going to last almost exactly one hour. So there'll be an hour showcase in 15 minutes and then our post show afterwards. Uh, but right now we're going to take a look at the ID at Xbox program, uh, a great program this week. Actually, if you're on Xbox, there's a summer game fest demo event over 70 games that you can download and preview for free. Uh, one of the, Big things I wanted to do with Summer Game Fest was give everyone a chance to play more games at home. And I want to thank the team at Xbox for putting that together in these unusual circumstances where we don't have big uh, consumer events to go and play games. But right now, let's take a look at ID at Xbox. And there are some glimpses of some new games in here as well. Check it out.
There you go. Shredder snowboarding game. I missed my SSX. So that one looks really good. Uh, and lots of great games coming to the ID at Xbox program that we're excited about. Um, all right. Now, though, we have a pretty cool brand new game to show you. Uh, this comes from a legendary game creator. And when I saw this uh, and the journey he wants to take us on with this game, I was, I was really excited and honored to have the opportunity to share this with you. So uh, this is a bit of a longer piece, but it takes you into the world of a brand new game um, from a, a special creator in Japan. Please check this out. Hello, Xbox fans of everyone. Square Enix's Nakayuji. Today, I'm going to show you a strange, strange story of the game that I've been playing. 僕は現在スクエーニックスにいてバランカンパニーという新しいブランドを立ち上げましたそしてここにいる昔ソニックやナイツを一緒に作った大島直人と20年ぶりにタッグを組んでアクションゲームを作っています中さんがスクエーニックスに行くと知った時はびっくりしました僕も驚いたよしかしこうしてまた一緒にタッグを組んでゲームを作れることそして僕たちの得意とするゲーム作りとスクエーニックスが得意とする物語や音楽とが合わさり誰も体験したことのない新しいゲームを世界中の皆様にお届けできることをとても嬉しく思います今日僕たちが皆様にお届けするのはアクションゲームの全てを詰め込んだアクションゲームオブアクションゲームバランワンダーワールドですアクションゲームにミュージカルの世界観を持ち込んでボタン一つでたくさんの衣装能力を使い進んでいくゲームになります苦悩や葛藤人は誰しもがポジティブな気持ちとネガティブな気持ちのバランスを保ちながら生きていますしかしそのバランスが崩れた時あなたはバランシアターに迷い込みます悩める12人のキャストたちの心象世界をあなたは様々なアクションを駆使して進んでいきますアクションの一つ一つが衣装に割り当てられておりその数はなんと80種類を超えます衣装を次々に着替えながら各ステージに散りばめられた謎を解きそしてネガティブな気持ちにとらわれてしまったキャストたちの心をあなたの手で取り戻してあげてください本作は24言語に対応予定です XBOX1 さらに XBOX シリーズ X にももちろん対応し片方のコンソールを持っていればどちらでも遊んでいただけるスマートデリバリーにも対応する予定です世界中の皆様に 4K の最高画質で本作の世界を隅々まで楽しんでいただけますワンダーワールドの世界で皆様をお待ちしています最後に今日は全世界初公開の映像も準備いたしましたのでどうぞご覧ください It's show time! Balan Wonderworld, a strange and mysterious land that you visit when you come to a turning point in life.
over 80 different costumes, unlocking unique actions and abilities. Look into your hearts to discover what's most precious. Balan Wonderworld. Every moment is an adventure. There it is, the announcement of Balan Wonderland. Uh, Knights was such a special and important game to me. I want to thank Nakasan and Square Enix for uh, sharing that world premiere announcement with us here on the, the pre-show. Uh, there's even more good stuff, though, coming up at the top of the hour. We are just six minutes away, uh, so we're going to have another group uh, join us here as we count down in the final five minutes. Uh, we got Matt Pat joining us live from the Game Theorist headquarters. It's over. I could check out right now. I am sold. Balan Wonderworld, number one game. Over. Stand aside Halo Infinite. That was what I needed to see. I was going to say, I was pretty excited when we got that. I'm like, okay, this pre-show is going to be pretty good. Um, that's an exciting announcement. Um, yeah, just to have those guys back doing that. So yeah, I agree with you, Matt, Pat. All right, we've also got JD Witherspoon joining us. What's up, Ron? Yeah. How you doing? Yo, I'm chilling, man. I'm looking at this countdown for the showcase. I'm ready to put my helmet on and get it going. But I'm like, let's talk. Let's talk real quick. <laughs> I was going to say, we got five minutes. And uh, <laughs> joining us also is Allegra Frank from Vox. Allegra, how you doing? Hey, I'm really good now. Like, after Balan Wonderland, I'm with Matt. Yo, that's it. That's the end of the show for me. <laughs> we done yeah no it was it's nice happy uplifting we need a game like that so that was yeah a pretty good way to end the pre-show it hopefully means there's even more big surprises coming in the uh the main show uh and let's let's talk about this uh you guys are going to join us afterwards as well to react to what we see so let's kind of get the preview uh bow in wonderland but what uh what else what do you guys what's gonna let me put it this way what can mike what does microsoft do, need to do to get an a from you um, watching this conference. So what, what's it going to take? Let's start with you, Matt. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to me, we all know Halo Infinite is the big gem in their crown, right? Like, that's the, the piece that they're selling, the killer app. That is their killer app. Uh, but to me, you know, as a mild Halo fan, I want to see what is the other thing that's going to get me to buy this system in particular. And if it's not a neon green skin, like we saw for the earlier Xbox generations, to coat that big uh, like obelisk that you're buying with Xbox Series X, Balan Wonderland at, or Balan Wonderworld uh, might have sold it for me. It looks like exactly the sort of game that I need in 2020, that the world needs in 2020, and it, it hits me right in the nostalgia feel. So I needed another killer app for this system, and that might have been it. Wow. All right. Uh <laughs> You guys are done in the pre-show. I like it. There are already already high marks. Uh, JD, what uh, we know we're going to see Halo. Seems like you're sufficiently hyped if you've got your Master Chief helmet. Um, what's it going to take to get an A from you in the post-show grade? Uh, well, I mean, obviously Halo. I would love for them to take Halo Infinite and use it to be showcased the same way they showcased Halo 2 from the E3 2005 uh, world premiere. I remember that. They did the gameplay mixed in with cutscenes. And then, I mean, I, I think we be I believe we talked about Fable a little bit earlier. I believe Fable 4 would be great. I, I don't know if they've ever put out that last Fable. I'm not sure. I have to go back. 
And then for me personally, I, I want a, I want a new Matrix video game. I know that no one in the in the chat wants that, but hey, remember Enter the Matrix? That was fire. Remember that Bullet Time? Yo, bring me oh, back. Matrix yeah, I remember that. Right now, intersected so. with the movies and stuff. Yeah, all right. That that's that's a wild prediction that we're gonna get a new new Matrix. Keanu, they used Keanu last year, so you never know. Bring him back again. Um, Allegra, I know you're excited about Balan, uh, what they're doing. Uh, what else will it take to to hype you up to an A grade in the post-show? Right. I mean, everything that's excited me in the pre-show is pretty much what I would also want in the post-show, which is interesting, sort of inventive, newer IP. Like, I'm not a big, you know, Halo nerd or Watch Dogs or just anything with a number after it, unless it's some, like, bizarre number that has nothing to do with <laughs> the game. <laughs> like, if it's a sequel, I'm pretty much out but i would love to see more from um tell me why by don't nod i would love mm -hmm. to see some actual like gameplay and a good emphasis on that because it really brings a an interesting amount of diversity to xbox but in general i like to be really surprised whether or not it's some you know Final Fantasy exclusive that's making its way onto the Xbox uh, for the first time, or just some game we've never heard of before from some small, exciting studio. I mean, that's always what wins me over. Also, Keanu Reeves, if he shows up again, I mean, that would be really great. Hey, you never know. I think he's in Berlin filming Matrix, but hey, it's virtual, so anyone can, this thing is this year, anyone can show yeah, up because uh, around the world we can in. connect people. And it's so different to not be with you guys, you know, with 5,000 people at the Microsoft Theater uh, getting to see this stuff. But we are literally uh, just about a minute away here from going live. You guys are going to join us afterwards. You've got your Master Chief helmet. Um, and I want to thank everyone for joining us exclusively here on YouTube for the, uh, the pre-show for the Xbox event. Um, it's going to be about two minutes until we go. So uh, maybe one last quick rapid fire here. JD's got... Uh, got his uh, helmet on. How do you guys think they're going to open the show? What do you think the first thing is? Halo Infinite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. absolutely. Like, start with the big guns. That's They know that that's what everyone's here for. And then everything else is kind of icing on the cake. Allegra, Definitely. do you agree? Or do you want, you want yeah. some weird no. and wacky ideas? It's going to be Halo, which for okay. someone who doesn't really care about Halo, I would love because I need a bathroom break. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, JD. Uh, the chat just lit up. He's going to take a bathroom break during Halo. All right. But hey, we got Balan. And yeah, that's part of the fun is that we don't know what they're going to do. And they've been very quiet. They've just said Halo. But beyond that, they've really not told us anything else about what games are going to be in there. Um, so you said, tell me why. Great example. Everwild, Psychonauts. Those are games that we know they're making that hopefully we'll have updates on. And then I imagine, I know for a fact, there will be some new games announced um, in this showcase. And it's exciting to watch it live here on YouTube. Well, Matt, JD, Allegra, thanks for joining us. You guys are going to be with us afterwards. We're going to react to the press conference, see how Microsoft did. And then we're going to have some guests, some of the developers and some of the games featured in the show. Uh, we're going to have interviews with them and Xboxes. Aaron Greenberg will be joining us live to uh, break down some of the news. So uh, enjoy it. Watch it live here. The Xbox Game Showcase, an hour of games right here on YouTube.
Sonar exosuit is now complete. Even though this technology will save humanity in the war to come. I must remind myself. Liquid crystal cannot rise on its own. Titanium alloy cannot prevail in the face of extinction. It all means nothing until you step inside. This is a punishment, right? Yep, this is death. No! No! No, 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 no! This isn't happening. I'm going to have to make an emergency landing. Hold on, shit! I'll be safe. <laughs> safe? I haven't been safe since I found you. I found you, remember? You were out there on your own and you'd still be out there if it wasn't for me. I thought I was going home. There won't be a home if we don't stop the banished. You keep saying that. We're outgunned, outnumbered. I know I saw Cornwallers over there. I'm going to dig through them and find one with the working sleep space drive. And when you're done with this war, we can get away from here. Far away. Wait here. Oh. Let me find. First, when I get back, we can look. Together. Okay, big guy.
broken, scattered, haunted, defeated by me. I wish I could tell you it was difficult, but it wasn't. <laughs> we are one step ahead, always. The ring is already under our control. Soon, the auditorium as well. The Harbinger and the Banished share the same goal. We fight together to honor the will of Atriarchs. But, without challenge, I grew weary, lost. We hope you enjoyed your first look at Halo Infinite's campaign. I'm incredibly proud of the team at 343, and we're thrilled to share a hint of the epic battles that await you on the next chapter of Master Chief's journey. This is the most ambitious campaign we've ever created at 343. For the first time, players will have the freedom to explore a mysterious new Halo ring that's several times larger than our last two Halo games combined. Halo Infinite has been built from the ground up to take full advantage of Xbox Series X. Bigger battles, epic vistas, more complex visual effects, displayed with 10 times the processing power per pixel of Halo 5. This will be running at a flawless 60 frames per second and will allow us to bring the Halo ring to life in ways that have never been possible before. We look forward to sharing even more about Halo Infinite in the coming month, including the first look at multiplayer. And now, please enjoy a glimpse of what others in the Xbox Game Studios family have been working on. World Premiere Welcome everyone to the Xbox Game Showcase. Today, we're showing games from nine of our 15 Xbox Game Studios, including unveils of five new first-party games. What you will see today 
is how Xbox Game Studios are harnessing their passions to bring their dreams to life. We believe that how you find and play your games is as important as the device you play them on. Xbox Game Pass is the best way to discover and play. And we want you to be able to experience as many great games as possible. So Game Pass members, you can play every game you see today from your subscription or free to play. These games will look and play best on Xbox Series X, delivering unmatched fidelity, performance, precision, and immersion. And we've designed the most consistently powerful next generation console. And we've built state-of-the-art platform technology to allow every developer to realize their full vision. One studio that has always pushed the limits of our hardware is Turn 10. And they're early in development on the next Forza Motorsport. And Xbox Series X is bringing them closer to their dream of unprecedented realism with ray tracing and native 4K resolution, all at 60 frames per second. The trailer you're about to see was captured completely in engine. World premiere. a rhythm. We all sense it. But only a few truly feel it. It is found in the smallest moments. In every step of a perilous journey. In the symmetry of ritual bonds we share. And in moments of stillness, it teaches us to look beyond the expected. To be a light in dark places. To seek answers. And to stand watch over our world. Our world has a rhythm. We all sense it. But only a few truly feel it. Everwild will give to you a magical and untamed natural world for you to explore and to just truly lose yourself in. It's a place to be eternal. 
an eternal has the gift to sense and feel how magic flows through nature makes ever living. The team here at Rare are so excited to be working on something like Everwild, and I hope you're excited too. But I just want to take this opportunity to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone who has shown their support and love, and for the incredible, awesome, positive community that's already growing around this game. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whoa, I just got hit with a flood of memories. Love you, Mom. You seeing what I'm seeing? Mom? Allison? Yeah. It doesn't matter that they don't believe us. We all believed that what happened that night was self-defense. But we couldn't be sure. It doesn't matter that they kept us apart. Brother, sister, we look out for each other. It doesn't matter that finding the truth feels impossible. We're all done with fairy tales. The only thing that matters is you're my brother. And the only way to move forward Mom. is to keep looking back. We've been getting these visions whenever we see or hear something really emotional. Everything we thought we knew about Marianne just got thrown out the window. She loved you. She attacked you. We both saw it. I thought coming here would be closing a chat lives. Nothing good comes from stirring up old memories. We don't really have a choice about that. There's always a choice, son. I can't do this. Hey everyone, my name is Gennady. I'm the co-founder and director of technology at Moon Studios. Today, we're very excited to tell you that we're working on a very, very special version of Ori and the Will of the Wisps, specifically for Xbox Series X. We are now at a time where we can reach levels of fidelity and frame rates previously absolutely impossible on any console. An already gorgeous game like Ori can now run at 120 Hz refresh rate in full 4K HDR in its highest quality, delivering unprecedented game feel with silky smooth animation, super crisp sharp image, and low input latency, which is just so important for the tight and precise platforming feel of this game. We can also boost the immersion in different spaces in our world by using premium audio tech that we previously just could not simulate in real time. And with all of this crazy hardware power, we can give our players more options with how they want to play our game. We can't wait for all of you to experience this very special version of Ori coming to Xbox Series X with smart delivery later this year. Farthest reaches of the universe comes the biggest mystery in the galaxy. An abandoned research facility, and now shady corporate intrigue. Marvel of the Gorgon asteroid. A sordid stopover, full of salacious secrets and scandalous strangers. Greetings, attractive patron. You are looking right on today. With the right pace. They wanted us to develop a miracle drug. Can put you on the wrong side of a gun. 
or sword, or this thing. Thrills, danger, intrigue. A word of advice before you go, Captain? Trust no one. What will you find on Gorg? Internet and me drinks parent stay. If you're waiting for the biggest game of the year, then wait for Cyberpunk. But if you're ready for the smallest, we've got you covered. From Obsidian Entertainment, the makers of games that are nothing like this one. This summer, strive together to thrive together. Or just feed your friend to the spiders and go solo. At Obsidian, we're dedicated to pushing narrative and role-playing games. It's something we do every day when we come to the office, and we can't wait for you to play our next great adventure, Peril on Gorgon. It's the first of two planned story expansion packs for The Outer Worlds that we're putting together with our friends from the private division. Now, it's also important that we continue to evolve how we tell stories in games, and Grounded is the perfect example of that. The team has been working for the last two years on how to tell an Obsidian story within a survival game. Now what's great is that you're gonna be able to play the game on July 28th on Xbox Game Preview and on Steam Early Access. We wanna hear from you and we wanna to continue to build, build Grounded together. Oh yeah, if you've been wondering, we have working on that next RPG. Check this out. World Premiere. We have always known war. It forged our empire. Turned heroes into queens and kings. And decimated our foes. Now our oaths are lost, forsaken. And you must face the monsters. Our sins have borne. Is an oath worth the weight of a crown? Avowed is an expansive first-person RPG set in the fantasy world of Eora. When Obsidian Entertainment joined Xbox Game Studios, they told us that this epic game is the one they want to make. As creators of critically acclaimed RPGs, this is Obsidian at their best, and it is being built from the ground up to take full advantage of the power of Xbox Series X. At Xbox Game Studios, we also work with independent developers, always with the goal of empowering them to bring their ideas to life. 
I'm excited to announce our work with Interior Night, a new studio led by some of the most talented storytellers in our industry. Let's meet Caroline Marshall, studio head of Interior Night, to debut their original game. Bonjour, I'm Caroline from Interior Night. Our team is really passionate about active storytelling because when you play a story, you step into the character's shoes. You get to experience their fears, their hopes, their conflicts firsthand. And in the process, you learn more about yourself. And this is quite powerful. Our first game spans 30 years in the American Southwest. It's a story about family, resilience, and sacrifice. But most of all, it's about how you will shape the fate of real, flawed people trying to find their way in a world they don't fit in. I hope you enjoyed the trailer. World Premiere Fortune, fortune, smile and fade I haven't seen you much of late I need you now, I cannot wait But when I look, you're not around We were on our way to start a new life that summer For our family, it was just a stopover For mine It was the end of the road the sun went down on all of us that day. Was it fate? Coincidence? No. It was a long forgotten secret. Buried in the dark. All my life, I've been scared of the shadows. But now, I'm finally ready to step into the light. I got your letters. Here at Ninja Theory, we're hard at work on all of our projects, including Senua Saga Hellblade 2, which we announced at the Game Awards back in December. An incredible 3.5 million players have now experienced Senua's story in Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. We're excited to start giving you an insight into what comes next for our Celtic Warrior, an experience that we'll be building in Unreal Engine 5 for Xbox Series X and PC. I'm happy to reveal today that Senua's Saga will be set in the beautiful country of Iceland. And you can find out more about our location scouting and how we've discovered the history of our setting in a brand new behind the scenes development diary, which you can view straight after the show on the Ninja Theory YouTube channel. It's been so touching to see the impact that Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice has had on so many players and we're incredibly thankful to all of the fans that have been part of Senua's story so far. And we're excited for you to be part of our development journey from here on out. Line what? Here. Peter? Peter, he's been sitting there the whole time? Hey, who wrote the song? Uh, Peter. Oh, Peter. Fantastic work. Love the song. Very much. It's going to be fun to sing it. Now it's time to, to rock. Shall we start rocking? Probably been a long time since you've had a visitor. I hope you don't mind pop-ins. Where are we? Shh. It's a quiet place. Lord. 
lost alone Neither skin nor bone Just a thought is all I've got Now my cover's blown At the bottom of a lake Of frozen feeling When my friends pulled me back up I started We can't wait for you to experience the amazing games built by Xbox Game Studios. And there is just so much more for you to play on Xbox. We are partnering with thousands of creators, from the largest publishers to the smallest independent developers, to bring you the broadest variety of games ever. There is one developer in particular that is close to us, not just geographically, but in history too. I'm thrilled to announce that this fall, our friends at Bungie will bring Destiny 2 to Xbox Series X and Xbox Game Pass. If you are one of the more than 10 million Game Pass subscribers, you also get access to all current Destiny 2 expansions starting this September. For Game Pass Ultimate members, Destiny 2 will also be playable on mobile from the cloud. Later this year, Bungie will also release a new version of Destiny 2 that is optimized for Xbox Series X. 4K resolution running at 60 frames per second. Here's an all new look at Bungie's Destiny 2 Beyond Light. I've seen terrible things born out in the darkness. Every moment brings them closer. It's time to step beyond the light. Destiny 2 that you can play any way you want thanks to Xbox Game Pass. Some of the world's most inspired developers are working on games for Xbox Series X and we're just honored to be able to collaborate with them. Xbox Series X will empower both new and experienced creators to bring the future of games to life 
like never before. Unique perspectives, unexpected innovations, and fresh voices that demand to be heard and that we can't wait for you to discover. All of the games you're about to see are being built to launch exclusively on Xbox consoles. Thanks and enjoy. World Premiere. World Premiere. My Lord Inquisitor, I've reached a term of prime and begun our investigations. Our recon squad has been sent into sub-level six of the hive to determine the full extent of the unrest. I'll know more when they make it back. World Premiere.
world premiere. Approaching orbit. Scan's a no-go. Sure you want to drop here? Oh yeah. Already lacing up my boots back here. What we got? Another good-for-nothing space rock? Whoa. Hold on. Let me check. Find anything good? Vex, you're not gonna believe this. Ouch! What the... starts with a dead girl. The forest. The moon. Scent of pines. And then... The gunshot. Every story has two sides. A regular, rational one but also a darker and deeper truth. Not unlike a nightmare. I can see both. Worse, I can live them. premiere.
Luis Torres. I've seen your future. Global risk is death of the weapon. Destiny chose me to save this world. And I will see it done. The Blacklist, we make our own path. We protect our own. Can you protect me from fate? of him. Today, you saw 10 world premieres and 22 console launch exclusives. Game Pass members can play every game you have seen today from Xbox Game Studios and all of our partners in the subscription or free to play. This is just a peek at some of the new titles coming to Xbox Series X. And some of the games you already love and some you have yet to play will also be optimized for Xbox Series X. Games like Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, and Sea of Thieves. You'll get the next-gen upgrades at no additional cost when they launch. You can expect a lineup of over 100 titles for Xbox Series X this holiday season. With Series X and Game Pass, Xbox is the place to play, and you are at the center of everything we do. Now, you may have noticed we didn't get to visit all of our Xbox Game Studios today. That means we'll have more to share later this year. But until then, here's one more thing. World Premiere. The world is filled with stories of legendary heroes and treacherous villains. Of fantastical creatures and wondrous places where nature and magic live in perfect harmony. Not all stories have happy endings. But yours has yet to be written.
All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Xbox Game Showcase post show. There you go, the announcement of a brand new Fable and our first look at the gameplay of Halo Infinite. Uh, we now have a post show with some developers joining us as well as Aaron Greenberg from Xbox. Uh, Luke Smith from Bungie is going to be with us as well. Tim Schaefer and uh, much more. And of course, we want your reactions to hear what you guys think. I just posted a poll on Twitter. How would you grade Xbox in the press conference and what they did? Uh, we want to hear your opinion on it and what Xbox showed across their entire portfolio. One interesting thing, everything they showed today was an Xbox Game Pass game, um, which you know is pretty impressive that all those titles are going to be on Game Pass. But of course, they're probably games that you wanted to see there that you may not have seen. So we want to hear what people think, but we've got our panel now to react to everything, to tell us uh, what they thought. You heard leading in uh, what their expectations were. Uh, everyone was excited about the Balan announcement in the pre-show. How did Xbox do in the main show? Well, let's welcome them back again. We've got Matt, Pat, JD, and Allegra fresh off the live showcase. We were all watching it. So I've done a lot of talking. Matt, uh, let's start with you. What, what did you think? I thought, you know... Jeff, I think you had some of the biggest announcements. So the conference itself, I'd give it like B, B plus. The pre-show where you announced Ball in Wonderland, you showed a brief clip of 12 minutes, uh, Hello Neighbor 2, which I kind of hate that whole franchise. I have a whole history with it, but I appreciate that it was there. Uh, you know, I got to say the pre-show pushed it into A territory for me. Um Infinite looked great. I was glad to see that it wasn't just like an infinite uh, pay-to-play kind of game where you're that there's an actual storyline, that there's an actual campaign that you're going to play through. Uh, the Forza graphics really showed off the power of the console, and I'm not even a, a graphics guy. So yeah, across the board, like there was a lot of CGI cutscenes. There was a lot of you know not in-game moments, but I was really excited. I thought they did a solid job of showing off the breadth of it, and the true winner outside of the pre-show is Game Pass. I think they see where the future is headed. They see that that's going to be their big money maker, get people to try a lot of these games and hop aboard the subscription train. I think it's a smart move on their part, and that's the winner of this press conference. Yeah. I agree. No, it's, it is pretty impressive that all those games are going to be in Game Pass. Allegra, you wanted some uh, some surprises, some weird, whimsical, fun games. On it, you know, Halo. I don't know if it's so. You had your bathroom break, but I don't know if you got to catch a little bit of it at uh, at the end there. But what what was your overall impression of, of what they did? I think one thing that a lot of people on online were saying, you know, they wanted to see the power of that next gen box. You know, wh where they were taking kind of games and graphics. As Matt said, you know, definitely some CG teasers in there for State of Decay, Fable, whatnot. What grabbed your attention? What, what how would you grade what they did? Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely did take my bathroom break during Halo. I feel like when I came back, it was still going. So <laughs> I'm glad you guys got, you know, your infinite amounts of Halo. Ha ha. Um, I thought there was actually a good mix of games that are both going to be coming out soon. And then games, obviously, that are very much in the works, you know, we have no real idea of when we'll see them. Um, so, you know, that game Grounded, I thought looked kind of cool, especially that's coming out in the summer. Um, I was happy to see that uh, Tell Me Why the first chapter would be coming out in August. I mean, it's really, it's always great that, you know, when an event has games that we can actually anticipate with a concrete end date. But um, I also was really impressed that there was a good focus on original games. I was really excited to see the um, As Dusk Falls trailer. I thought that looked really great. And Everwild um, looks amazing. That game is really beautiful. A lot of great games with wonderful art design. Um, and But yeah, I mean, I think in terms of showing off the new console, it seemed as though a lot of the games that we saw are compatible with the Xbox One as well, or we just saw, as you totally mentioned, CG teasers. But the Ori, um, the Ori, I guess, upgrade for Xbox Series X looks amazing. Like that looked fantastic. So that was a really cool little teaser for what to kind of expect from the the new console, even if it's a you know an existing game, yep. just kind of redone for Series X. So, so what uh, what letter grade would you give them here? Um, I don't believe in letter grades. I'm one of those unschooling people. Um, so, 
<laughs> yeah, we don't we don't do letter grades. Um, I mean, I'd probably give you it thumbs I'd up probably... or down, or how do you how do you like? To <laughs> no, I mean, I would if I'm going to adhere to the Jeff Keeley scale, I would say probably B plus as well. Oh. I actually thought it was you know there was a good breadth and diversity of games shown. Um, Game Pass was definitely the star of the show, as you guys mentioned, and I think it's cool that they're leaning into that program. Yep, absolutely. All right, JD, uh, you put your Master Chief helmet aside. We got to see a lot of Chief. I thought that, that opening kind of CG lead into the Halo piece was so beautiful. I mean, it just was epic. When you actually got to see the game and the gameplay, and that was a real demo. I mean, they said, you know, press, press here to play the demo. What was your takes? Halo back? I'm, you know, I love, I love Halo, and I've beaten all the previous games and all the side games minus the Halo War series. I'm not a top-down guy, but I'm, I, I'm one of those people who's watching it, and I'm like, wait, I'm confused on the story. That's the one thing that's kind of throwing me right now. I mean, I'm just gonna wait and see what happens. But I like the gameplay. I, we have a grappling hook. I'm a fan. We're like Spider-Man now <laughs> with a gun. So I'm excited about that. And I'm also excited about the other games that we saw. Uh, State of Decay 3, I've never been more scared of, of Deers. Uh, Bambi's not going to be the same anymore. Um, regardless of that, uh, Fable at the end, I didn't, I didn't think that was going to happen. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So they, they touched on that. Uh, I think we got a lot of decent stuff. Uh, letter grade wise, I would maybe, I'd give it a B, I'd give it a, I'd give it a, B plus A minus. It, it was it was one of the things where they show they're showing you what they're capable of. I'm we're all aware that the console is going to be very powerful. You know, everybody wants to know when it's coming out and when we can expect it and when we could put pre orders in. But from what I saw, I, I enjoyed it. I think I think they they came they came swinging. Yeah, no, and as everyone's mentioned, Game Pass will obviously allow you to play across multiple devices as well. So as you said, it's a di you know their philosophy is not all about getting you to upgrade to Series X, right? It's sort of like if even you have a PC now or a phone or, you know, even an existing Xbox, look like everything in that showcase will be on Game Pass and also be available potentially on the device you already have. So it's less of a, a story of get you to upgrade to the new machine. That said, Matt, when you look at that, you know, this fall, you got you to buy one first or maybe buy both, but PlayStation or Xbox, like how is it? did it do enough to convince you like this should be in first position for you? Honestly, that's the question that I was asking myself the entire time watching the conference. And I got to say, Xbox sold me on the need for it being next gen more than PlayStation. And I feel bad saying that because I think last generation I skewed more into PS5 ter or PS4 territory. Um, right. But I really love the games that they showcased. I love the fact that they're really diving into the the ID at Microsoft program and some of those indie those indie ideas that are kind of you see surfacing and you're starting to see them kind of bubble up and get more of a spotlight. I love the emphasis that they have on that. And you know, they do have a lot of big titles that, you know, are coming down the pipeline. And I know that you you think we're joking, Jeff, about Bal and Wonderworld, but I got to say that I have I felt so emotional watching them talk about that game and seeing that style of gameplay in a way that I haven't felt about a lot of games in a long time and like it's it seem it seems so dumb but I'm so excited off of just that short little bit that you played before the whole thing started like that it's a pre-show pre-show gets an A as you said to sell the system seriously <laughs> <laughs> all right I, I like it Matt Pat Ballon that's the no I said I, I, I think there was a there was a whimsy and kind of, yeah, it's just, he said, and Yuji Naka coming back doing that. I think he said, like, I love that game where he's, the world needs a little bit more of that, right? And a few less zombies and a few less guns and just kind of fun and, you know, musical and whatnot. Yeah. I agree. Um, Allegra, out of all the things that you saw, was there anything that you didn't see that you wanted to see? We got a little bit of a tease of Fable. I mean, not a lot of info, I think, in that. I'm sure fans can maybe pull apart some things, but it's sort of, Playgrounds making a fable, which we kind of already knew um, in some form. Uh, was there anything that you were like disappointed that you didn't see? I think I sort of mentioned before, I always love to see that really big wow surprise of, oh, wow, we're getting, you know, Sony exclusive showing up on a uh, 
Microsoft platform for the first time. I'm thinking about when they announced Final Fantasy 15 would be on the Xbox. So we didn't really get anything quite like that, where it's very, you know, unpredictable or even shocking, which I really thrive on those moments. I think we all kind of do. So it didn't really have the big wow showstopper moment yep. um, for me. I would agree. No, I think that's the thing. As you said, there was kind of things we knew. And yes, there's a new Forza coming. I guess probably the biggest surprise might have been, you know, Obsidian's Avowed, which is at least, you know, reveal of a new game. But he said that's expected. They're a first party studio. They make RPGs. So they're making another one. But you're right. Wasn't some, you know, there were rumors before of like, oh, there's going to be a Ninja Gaiden or there'll be other, you know, other things. And even on the third party side, one thing that I think was notable is that every game in there was on Game Pass. I think that meant a lot of games weren't included because they might not be on Game Pass. So people were, you know, wondering, like, where was Cyberpunk? Where was, you know, where was Elden Ring? And, you know, things like that and all these big expectations. But it was more focused on um, the first party sort of studios overall. Um, I'm curious to get your take, like, in the environment we're in this year out of all the games that were there and Game Pass, is that... Is that changing how you guys are going to play games or thinking about games? We're in this world where these live service games are out there. You know, as you said, effectively with that, you're never going to have to pay $60 to play any of those games. Do you think, is that going to change how we play games moving forward? Because it is a bit of a difference in philosophy to sort of other platforms that it's more Netflix-like and that you're going to get to sample a bunch of games. Um, is that, is Game Pass, is it changing how you guys are playing games now or do you think it's going to change moving forward? I mean, I definitely think it's a really smart initiative that Microsoft has and that it owns. I mean, Sony has PS Now, but like, LOL, right? So, and Nintendo doesn't quite have anything like that other than NES and SNES Online. So Microsoft really owns the streaming but for games um, side of the industry. And I think people are attracted to it and the fact that it really is pushing it so hard. I think it's going to be something that might become industry standard that Sony and Nintendo will have to react to for the next generation, which is really interesting, I think. And encouraging people to sample a ton of games definitely is a an appealing sort of uh, sort of pitch. And I know I froze there for a second, but I'm back. Yeah, it, to me, That's okay. it's so pro-consumer. <laughs> it gives the power back to the player, right? Where, you know, for a long time, I mean, in the early, early days, old man Matt Pat here, you could rent games, right? And you could see if you could beat it in a period of days or if it was a game that you wanted to kind of pursue. And there's been this kind of like nebulous area where you either have to kind of fully commit to the game or not for a really long time. There hasn't been kind of a good solution since that era, really. And like there's been ideas here and there, but what this does is it allows players to sample such a huge variety of different games really find games that interest them and also there's no risk and and no cost to try things that you might not have played otherwise right and so hey you might have grown up as a first person shooter guy but wow that indie game is just available right there let me check it out because i saw someone on youtube play it or my friends talked about it or whatever suddenly you're drawn into a whole other world of gaming that who knows you might like and want to explore and find you know your new favorite title in and i think that is so exciting i think it's so forward facing and like i said i think it puts the hands uh, the the power back in the hands of the player as well as giving so many more studios a chance to have their work seen by more people which i think is good all across the board yeah absolutely no i think that's just said yeah, look at some of those games in there Tell Me Why or Psychonauts or games that people might, you know, not necessarily buy right out of the gate for $60, but now they're like, hey, I can experiment with it, I can play it, and you might, you know, might get hooked and, and have more more stuff to play. Um, JD, are you fine? Like, you know, you talk about Halo, that's a game I'm sure you would pay $60 for, but hey, that's coming in Game Pass. So does that open you up to, do you think, playing more of these games than normal? Yeah, definitely with Game Pass and just the option to stream games. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, looking forward to what the future has when it comes to being able to do that. Cause I, like most people, I have game pass as well. So if it's just a simple download compared to maybe, I don't know, getting like the limited edition box set or a physical copy, I'm, I probably will do that. Cause it'll probably be easier to hop online and play with friends. And I feel like just that whole concept of game pass being able to, you know, stream games simultaneously, 
maybe across different devices and just having that type of freedom will make things easier for future gamers so that they can open up and just have fun with it. But I, I wanted to say uh, to, to you and Matt, hey, uh, going back to our uh, our uh, deadlock debate, uh, Matt, <laughs> is hype, is like hype killing video you. games? Remember that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's a good four I years ago. I remember that. that. That's right. <laughs> no, I mean, look, there's, there's a whole hype. I mean, there's a hype cycle to this stuff where we saw a lot of, you know, CG trailers for games that are probably years off and whatnot. And I think one thing a lot of people did say I saw in the chat and online, and people were like, they want to see more gameplay, right? We got to see a Halo demo, but everything else was like a very tightly wound trailer. And I think we're in an age now, people just want to see Let's Play, just, you know, see games. Um, and you do wonder, like, that Fable teaser, like, you don't really learn much about the game at all, right? And it's sort of like it's a fancy logo sequence. Um, and now it's like people are like, when do we wait to actually see the game? So did you guys say, did they, it's a good question. Do you think they showed enough gameplay? Like, is it the style of the presentation? And, you know, the event in May, I think people criticized them for saying it was gameplay and it wasn't. And, you know, this felt it was a more polished presentation overall and how they presented it. But it's a good question, even compared to the big E3 press conference that we always go to. They couldn't do that this year. Was this a good approximation? Like, what did you think of how they delivered the news? I Matt, think for start me with at you. this point, for, for these big events and these big conferences, I'm so used to just seeing a bunch of, a bunch of CG that I'm willing to forgive it a little bit more. Um, the nice thing about E3, right, is usually they show you the beautiful, like, front piece. Here's, here's us with our pretty title card. And then you can roll onto the show floor and actually get some hands-on time with whatever pre-rendered demo or, you know, short little gameplay segment that you have and you can actually get a feel for what the game is. Um, I am missing that and I, it is a shame that that doesn't exist this year. That being said, um, you know, I think at this point, it, it's one of those things that like, I wish I could have seen more uh, since you're kind of missing that component of it, but we're all doing the best that we can considering the world circumstances. I'm honestly just impressed that both of these consoles are still able to come out this year uh, considering all the, you know, the delivery pipeline, because every single piece is coming from a different part of the world. And, you know, factories have been out of work for a long time. There's been a lot of changes to the system. So I'm just still excited that this is still a year where gaming is stepping forward and able to provide us entertainment and that everything didn't have to get shifted to 2021. And so I'm more forgiving this year than I think I would be other years. Yep. No, I think that's a good point. And even with the expectations for some of these announcements, and press conferences, you said games are being built work from home. And I say to people, like, in some ways, the best anyone can do is a B this year just because of, like, the, the challenging circumstances we're in. But a lot of the fans think, hey, no, I want all my announcements. And as you said, it's been really hard to make games and make these trailers. Um, I like, or what about, you know, we're all watching these from home. We're not at this big live event. How did it, it didn't have the surprise, as you said, that, you know, the audible wow in the audience, right? And the energy of Keanu, you know, showing up as a surprise <laughs> last year and things like that. Um, how did you think of how Xbox like presented their story in this format this year? I think they did a good job considering the circumstances. Um, I'm a big Nintendo person. And so I'm pretty accustomed to the Nintendo Direct format at this point where it is that sort of presentation, there's no interactive or live component. So it doesn't feel as odd to me to see something like this. But I did appreciate, you know, having developers and directors and producers show up to sort of break up the flow. It does, it does feel different, though, to not have that actual in person energy. I think we all I mean, as we got we have all said, like, we do miss that we do miss being able to really react all together live. Um, so it's a little less fun to have to do that at home by yourself, but it's not completely, you know, out of the, out of the realm of impossible, like implausibility that we would have to stay at home and watch these. Like Nintendo has been doing that for years now. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Different format. But as, as Matt said, I think it would be great to be able to go hands on with some of this stuff. And that's one thing that we sort of miss now is like that halo demo looks great. Like let's jump in and play it. Um, which I know. JD would be there for, but uh, ho hopefully, I mean, the thing is, it still says holiday 2020. We didn't see multiplayer, like, you know, like holidays coming soon, right? And I think that's what's interesting with a lot of these games. It's like, you know, are they really going to make it? What are they going to look like? Um, and it's, you know, they're 
big games coming this holiday that we didn't see. I mean, you know, we just, Assassins we saw at the Ubisoft event. Uh, Cyberpunk, you know, probably one of the biggest games the second half of the year. They're doing their own Night City Wires. So it's like we didn't see that. And that potentially could be one of the biggest games for Xbox. Um, all right. Well, thanks, guys. Appreciate you dropping by. Seems like positive grades across the board. Yes, Matt? Jeff, I, I wanted one last prediction for everyone here. This is the question that's still, I think, on everyone's mind. PlayStation or Xbox, who's going to break first? Oh, no. Who's going to break first? And, uh, can you hear me, at least? <laughs> the who's Nintendo Ninja's got Matt. <laughs> it goes to Matt Pat. The battery went out, I think. <laughs> Damn it. Who's, who's going to break first and reveal the price? That's my question. Okay. Well, that, no, that's a good point. Um, by, we'll let Matt uh, recharge his battery. Uh, thanks to Allegra and JD. Uh, but yes, you're right. Who, the price is definitely a big question mark um, around the different systems. There's obviously rumors that there could be a second kind of version of Xbox Series X codenamed Lockhart that there's been a lot of rumors about. PlayStation has already revealed that there's going to be an all-digital PS5 and the full system. But you're right. The date and also the price of these systems. When are we going to get to find out what they're going to cost and what will be the differential there? Um, didn't hear anything about hardware today, which we weren't expecting to. Xbox kind of managed expectations that we weren't going to hear about hardware. It was going to be a game showcase, but that's probably one of the next phases. And, and the thing now this year, without the big E3 events, I think these companies are spreading their news out a little bit. Um, and we've seen that with Summer Game Fest is I expect we're going to see more events um, from, you know, Xbox and PlayStation uh, in the coming months um, to share additional news. So even Ubisoft did their Ubisoft Forward last week. They already said we're doing another one in September. So we're going to have kind of more uh, more frequent cadence, I think, of events um, throughout the summer. But uh, this obviously was, I think, one of the bigger Xbox events with a lot of games and content across the board. So thanks again to Matt. Allegra and JD for joining us. And now we've got some special guests to talk about all the content and answer your questions. Uh, and joining us right now, uh, live from an undisclosed location, is Xbox's Aaron Greenberg to talk about all the news uh, that Xbox shared inside of the press uh, briefing today, including Halo Infinite and a bunch of other titles. Aaron is uh, heads up all the marketing for all the Xbox uh, first party games. So uh, there were a lot of first party games today, uh, obviously with uh, you know with Halo Infinite and the reveal of a new Fable as well coming from uh, Playground Games. So uh, there he is. Uh, it is it is Halo shirt. Uh, Aaron Greenberg, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's good to be with you, Jeff. I wish we were uh, in LA at E3 and celebrating, like you guys were saying, letting people get hands on. But it's just good to have the show done and everything worked. And it's nice to see fans and, and partners and everyone reacting pretty positively. Yeah, no, this was a, a big moment. I know you and the team worked really hard to, uh, you know, to get all the games ready for today under these insane conditions to develop these titles. But let's start off with uh, the shirt that you're wearing and uh, Halo Infinite. Uh, we got to see, a, you know, a beautiful kind of uh, story piece and then a real demo of the gameplay of Halo Infinite. And definitely looks like the team is kind of going back to the roots of Halo, though adding some new things like Together. the grappling hook. Uh, tell us a bit about uh, what did you guys want to communicate with this demo of Halo? We've obviously seen some trailers before, but this was raw gameplay. Uh, what do you hope fans took away from this demo? Yeah, I mean, I think for many people, you know, whether you're new to the franchise or existing fans, I think we all remember the Halo combat evolved and really, you know, this is a spiritual reboot of that. And so how do we kind of take the OG Halo and modernize it? And I think what you've seen is the benefit of things like the Slipstream engine, uh, Halo's take on an open and expansive world, uh, seeing additions with things like the grappling hook. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 all chief all the time. And I think that uh, we've really, I think the team at 343 has done a great job creating the Halo game that I think the world needs right now and more than anything. And so that's been the focus. We've been anxious to let people see Halo, true gameplay, big campaign demo. That's what we opened the show with. Um, and uh, team's working hard and we're excited to get uh, this in the hands of fans this holiday. Yeah, uh, we obviously saw, you know, Xbox Series X gameplay on that. One thing that, you know, is unique this time is that this Halo game will, you know, it will work on your current Xbox, it'll work on your PC. Um, can you maybe explain sort of like what the team is able, going to be able to do with Series X with that game that will be sort of, you know, take it to the next level beyond sort of it working on the current systems? And I'm sure it's a challenge to make it work across everything, but 
I know Phil Spencer said it's going to be more PC like and that it will be optimized for, you know, higher powered machines. Um, tell us maybe a bit about like what the when you have those ter 12 teraflops, what the game is going to be able to do that uh, will really show off Series X. Yeah, I mean, what you're going to see from our first party teams is that they're developing these games natively for Xbox Series X. So they're going to first focus on getting the most power, the most performance out of that. So this will take full advantage of all the benefits of Series X. You're right, the 12 teraflops, the instant gaming you get from the SSD, the instant switching. Uh, you can see the lighting, a lot of the benefits from the from the engine. Um, so, so the more expansive worlds, you know, just tons and tons of benefits there with that said we want to create a game that xbox one fans can also play that pc gamers can also play and i think as you've seen what phil outlined in his player first post recently is that we want our fans this holiday to be able to play halo wherever they want to play it and whenever they're ready to upgrade to next gen we will give them the xbox series x upgrade of halo infinite at no additional cost by the way if you're a game pass member you get the game at launch but we're building this game so that um, if you get it in game pass you can play it on xbox one on the pc and on series x and you never get charged more than once for a game for a game whether you buy it or get it in the subscription one thing that's sort of a, a silly question, but I'm sure some people will wonder is now that everything's in Game Pass, people love their like collector's editions and things like that for, uh, you know, hey, the Master Chief helmets and whatnot. How are you guys approaching that stuff if, if all these things are in Game Pass? Are, will you still have collector's editions or how will you handle that kind of stuff? Yeah, we're working with retail partners around the world. There'll be like special steel books and things like that for people that want that. We know there's a fan that wants to buy the game have the physical disc and they want to have that steel book and they want to have something collectible that they can add to their collections and always loving fans send me tweets with pictures that they've literally from the original halo so we will make that available we also know for a lot of fans like maybe they wouldn't buy halo but if it's included in their game pass subscription they'll try it we think they're going to love it and that makes a better experience for everyone to have more people in multiplayer have more people playing halo building a bigger community is good not just for our internal studios but also for our for our third party partners so we're going to give people choice in how they play and of course we'll still support the physical editions as well awesome and chris uh studio head was in in there talking about or head of the game talking about uh single player and multiplayer is obviously going to be a big part of the experience as well Probably not not a ton to share today about that, but the team is obviously kind of focused on on both both modes in a big way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we really like you've seen with any any big big AAA game. If you looked at how we unveiled Gears, you know, last year, like we didn't do it all at once. We're really thoughtful about the right beats. I'd also say this entire show from beginning to end. Every person working on the show, every development team on every demo, every asset is all doing this from home. So uh, that's not easy for game development. So I'm just incredibly proud. The team at 343 has done heroics. They're making great progress on the game. What you saw was obviously full playable gameplay of the campaign. We know that's what people want to see first and foremost for Halo, but I've yep. been hands-on with the multiplayer. I've played it along with Phil and other folks. They've got a lot of exciting innovation happening there and we'll unveil that uh, when the time's right. But today was about campaign and a first look at you know, that open, expansive world, some of the new things like the grappling hook, um, and it's all chief all the time, which I think is uh, definitely yeah, what fans are looking for. What people wanted to hear confirmation of. And I saw holiday 2020, so the plan is still that this will launch kind of day and date with Series X for the game? Yes, our plan is to launch this holiday. We're planning to launch this with Xbox Series X. Uh, for folks that don't know, the last time Halo launched with an Xbox was with the original Xbox. Yeah. Uh, back in 2001. So, you know, for us, like, we've been very thoughtful about planning the launch of this generation and every approach, every detail, from all the player first initiatives to having Halo ready to building the world's most powerful console uh, ever made. And so we're feeling really proud about that. And we think we're well positioned for, for a, a great holiday for our fans and for our partners. Uh, you talked about, you know, world's most powerful console. You have a lot of other games. Uh, the studios group uh, showcases, Matt Booty said, you know, lots of world premieres and announcements. Um, one that we should talk about at the end there was a nice, uh, a nice moment was a brand new fable from Playground Games. We didn't get a ton of information out of that teaser about it. Um, but what can you tell us? I mean, fable is back. Uh, we can obviously expect a, 
RPG. It looks like that's more of a sort of a CG piece versus showing um, the gameplay. But what what can you tell us about the new Fable? Yeah, I mean, listen, we know this is probably at the very top of the list of things we hear from fans. I've heard from fans uh, more than anything is we want Fable. Uh, please make another Fable. And to put the Fable franchise and give it a completely fresh start in the hands of of one of the greatest game developers uh, in the world, and also right there in England with Playground Games, uh, is sort of a dream come true. So we're letting them, you know, get a fresh start with the franchise, uh, and really, um, you can see it's still got the classic, you know, British humor that's really true to the franchise. It's obviously going to be a role-playing game. Uh, we've got the best uh, folks in the industry working on it, and today was just the reveal of the game, and we're excited to uh, to officially say Fable's coming, uh, and we'll we'll share more uh, when we're ready. But this is the start of that journey. Yeah, and that wasn't the only RPG that you guys announced. Uh, Obsidian also announced Avowed, which is uh, you know something people are really excited about, a full next-gen RPG from the Obsidian team. Again, a similar kind of teaser, really just announcing the concept of it. Maybe could you talk a bit about between those two, I mean, what makes them, obviously thematically they're different, but are they both kind of similar RPGs, or how are you approaching them in terms of differentiating like the style of RPG that they are? Yeah, I mean, I think for Obsidian, what you're really seeing is just paying off the benefits of adding them to the Xbox Game Studios team. You know, I mean, they, it was in, I'm really proud of what they do with the Outer Worlds. You know, that got nominated even for uh, Game of the Year from the Game Awards. Uh, it was great to be able to show a new DLC for that. There's a small team of Obsidian that's created this product called Grounded uh, Survival, uh, open world survival game that, that fans are kind of loving. But we know, and we've just been quietly smiling and listening and everyone's like, please, like, I loved Pillars. I love Obsidian. They're big AAA RPGs. Like, what are they doing next? And uh, that's what today was about, to show, like, it's a true Obsidian RPG. They've got a lot of people working on this. This is going to be a massive AAA game. And uh, at this point, you know, it's about the reveal. We wanted to, uh, less is more, we think, but you can kind of get a sense of the first person view. You can get a sense of kind of where they're taking this. But this is a big bet for Obsidian. And it's mm -hmm. great that we're being able to give them all the resources to go realize their creative vision with this game. And uh, Obsidian always delivers. And fans that are looking for the next big RPG uh, from Obsidian should be excited about it. About. Uh, one game that you did show some in-engine footage on was uh, the next Forza, I guess, from Turn 10. Or could you explain what we saw? Because there was obviously beautiful uh, real-time footage. And is that is that sort of the Forza 8 or where is it next Forza? Or can you explain kind of what we saw there? Yeah, I mean, the Turn 10 team has 15 years of experience in the motorsports motorsport space. I mean, obviously, they have the highest rated best selling racing franchise in gaming. And what they're really doing with Forza Motorsport is just completely reimagining what that can be. They want to modernize it. Um, you can see they're bringing things like ray tracing to the Forza Tech engine. Um, they always push the limits of realism. Um, and fidelity. And for them to be, they were actually very actively involved in the design of the Xbox Series X. Um, and you can already see an early look at how they're taking full advantage of that. That was an engine. Um, and so we're announcing Forza Motorsport. Uh, there is no number on the end. That is intentional because this is a reimagination of what the next generation of Forza Motorsport would look like that's built from the ground up for the future um, from the from Turn 10, a studio that has 15 years of experience in the motorsport space. And uh, it's a good start, but we'll be definitely showing more uh, in the future. But hopefully fans liked what they saw today. So that's not a that's not a this year game. It's kind of a further out type of thing, but it's new Forza. Correct. Not this year, but we want to yeah. unveil it. We want to let people know it's in development and show you it running, show you it with ray tracing, show you kind of the power of Xbox Series X and engine, and then um, share more when we're ready. All right. Well, as you said, you definitely unveiled a slate of a lot of first party titles uh, coming uh, moving forward. And again, as we saw in the, the briefing, everything coming to... Uh, to Game Pass uh, moving forward, and that'll be that that'll be kind of the way it's done moving forward, right, Aaron? Everything will be in Game Pass from from your group, first party. 
Yeah, I mean, this was, to be honest, you know, this is the first time we've ever been able to do a show where we've reached a point with Game Pass where we can say from beginning to end, every game you saw is, if you're a Game Pass subscriber, every game you saw is included in your subscription. And uh, that's pretty powerful, you know, and you don't have to look and see, oh, is this one Game Pass, is this one not? Just sit back and enjoy from, you know, Halo to Destiny to Beyond Light to Fable to everything in between. If you're a Game Pass member, you're going to get all these titles uh, when they launch. And so that was pretty exciting. Uh, it's great to see people kind of say they thought Game Pass was the hero of the show. Um, and that also gave every game like a sense of purpose. So there was a lot of exclusives from our first party teams. Um, everything passed the Bungie title were all console launch exclusives from our third party partners. So you saw a real focus on exclusive games and a focus on Game Pass as something that we know fans that are invested in the Xbox ecosystem is sort of like, this is our gift to you and all the things that you get as an Xbox fan or a Game Pass member. A lot of people have also been wondering about Xbox Live and how that's going to relate to Game Pass. There was something online, I think, where it's like the 12-month Xbox Live might not be available or something. Can you explain to people how is that going to work moving forward? Are, are you phasing out Xbox Live and it'll all become Game Pass or how will that work for consumers? You know, I actually, I am the games guy. So I manage okay. uh, our first party and third party game stuff. I'm not sure. I can't, I'm not, okay. I'm not actually up to speed on the, on the Xbox okay. yeah, Live. Yeah, I just think I said people are like excited about the Game Pass and they have their Xbox Live and it's like, I think what everyone's saying is they love this one-stop solution, right? It's like, here's what I'm paying and I'm going to get all these great games and this great experience. So as you said, I'm yeah. sure over time it will all um, solve itself out. But yeah, the fact that there's so many great games in Game Pass, it's uh, really, really uh, such, such an amazing value. And speaking of Game Pass, uh, one game that was announced today for Game Pass is from a good friend of uh, both you and I, uh, Bungie and Destiny, and joining us now. Uh, from the Bungie team, uh, deep in his development bunker at home, is uh, Luke Smith. Luke, uh, hello. What's happening? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Luke, How are we how doing? You? you know, I'm you know I'm doing okay. It's a it's a little woolly over here, as you can see. I you know it's very uh, you know it's a it's a very quarantine situation here in the in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you have are, a way better quarantine look than I do. You've got the dev quarantine, been listen, hard at work for months look, Luke. That's very impressive. You know, that, yeah, I think that if we, uh, if I could just summon the entire Bungie team here, like everyone has a probably a similar haggard, you know, all hands on deck. You know, it's uh, the way I've described it is the quarantine has really changed the way we develop games. And it's like we're all in the rowboats, just grabbing the oars and trying to like get it going in the same direction. Like we've never made a We've never made a game this way before. So, no, and, and I have to say, all these teams, what they've been able to accomplish with development, and you think of voiceover and motion capture and you know music recording and everything. I mean, it's just really challenging for um, studios to do this stuff. So, yeah, Aaron, hats off to you and the whole Xbox uh, first party group for what you guys were able to pull together um, for this showcase. I mean, in a, you know, an amazing number of games with a lot of diversity, as you guys have been saying, um, both in sort of genre and style and tone um, across the whole thing. And even the pre-show, I mean, a lot of people were very excited uh, about Balan and some of the other games that uh, you guys have. And you look at, you know, sort of those two hours of games, uh, a lot of content and value coming to, uh, to gamers. So, uh, Aaron Greenberg, thanks for joining us. Uh, great to have you with us, and uh, congratulations on a on a great show. Uh, now Luke's going to give us some some Destiny dirt, right? Oh yeah, let's uh, let's just go through uh, through everything. Let's talk about where it's going to end. Uh, whatever you want, let's do it. Hey, well, you guys, you guys are showing gameplay. We're excited about uh, Beyond Light, and obviously coming to Game Pass. But I think you know everyone wants to know more about the game. You talked a bit about development. Look. Everyone knows you pushed back the date a little bit to November um, on it, which uh, I think is understandable given circumstances. But, you know, you guys at your event uh, last month, I mean, kind of outlined here's the next three, right? I mean, you're sort of being very clear with people about the roadmap and the plan. Um, this one, maybe, I mean, maybe we could talk a bit about Stasis, I guess. I mean, what do you, what do you want to share? Because I think everyone knows about it and you've talked about it, but you're keeping it kind of a mysterious in terms of how, you know, power set's going to work and whatnot is that yeah. deliberate or because you guys are still experimenting or no so it, it, it's a couple of things there's like a deliberate there's a deliberate approach that we're taking with with how we're thinking about marketing and talking about the game this year we are we're keeping the 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 cards a little closer to our vest 
in part because it's like the fun of the fun of playing video games the fun of entertainment is some of that you know being surprised we do have a bunch of changes that we're making um to the way that players are going to interact with uh wielding the darkness and you know we'll probably get into that a little bit before launch like we always want to get feedback on that but uh, you talked about that event uh, from whatever four or six weeks ago. I, I you know, time kind of flies here in the quarantine bubble. Uh, it's hard to keep track of anything. And what we're trying to do with with Destiny is really let everyone out there know, like this is, you know, Destiny Two is an awesome game that we are completely committed to. Like you can see, you know, that that Game Pass, how Game Pass fits into this vision of that single evolving world. You can play anytime, anywhere with your friends. Like we want to be, we want to be everywhere. You know, to to quote Ariel, like we want to be where the people are. You know, we have this this awesome global global community, and we want to keep growing it. And to now to close on the thing you pointed out at the top, Jeff, it's the you know we wanted to lay out that Beyond Light is the beginning of this new era, and it's going to continue next year with the Witch Queen and arc that we've been building toward uh, for some time. And of course, we're heading toward you know a, a moment that you know we're excited about with with Lightfall at, at the end of this like kind of you know three expansions. Yeah, that's, you know, a lot of a lot of your life to devote to sort of planning out, you know, what you're going to do over the next couple of years. So how, how you think of it obviously from a content perspective and a story, you know, lore narrative perspective, but I assume also from a gameplay perspective. Um so something like, you know, Stasis, tell us a bit about that. Is that something that is obviously impacts the next 3 in a way, but are you thinking that far ahead of like how how the gameplay is going to change? each year yes. or how do you map it out yeah so even with even with something like stasis like we're going to we're going to launch kind of a, a bunch of the player side of the abilities for stasis this fall like the you know in case freeze shatter like that that's going to enter enter destiny and then over the course of the rest of the year we're going to continue to add more like the creatures are going to gain access to it in a way that they they won't have it at the start like there's you're going to fight creatures obviously wielding it in the beginning but it's not going to be you know, it's going to proliferate throughout the game, this this ability to, to freeze, be frozen, et cetera. And then we look at our overall plan and we think about, you know, right now we're obviously, you know, ide ideating, you know, early thoughts on on what players are going to get to do next. You know, that's a place where for us, we like to start thinking about it because we're trying to make awesome, fun toys for people who've been building their guardians for, you know, maybe one year, maybe three years, or maybe they've been with us the whole time and it's been since, you know, 2014. So uh, we're, we we usually start from a place of you know what what's awesome that we can give the player. Uh, tell us a bit about events and in game events. Uh, you guys experimented with doing something pretty grand. I don't know. It was probably was it two months ago or whenever it was. Um, are we going to see more live events in game? Uh, I, I assume that's on the roadmap, and those are really hard to do. And it was awesome that you guys were able to accomplish that. How does that factor into kind of your roadmap for? Destiny from a content perspective. So, so I think that I think live events like that, like the, the Almighty event, was an awesome test for us. Like we want to, what we want to do is when we when we're gonna load up and, and point the guns like that at a at a target, we want it to be when it can be maximally impactful. Like I don't think that's the type of thing we would do every season. Like we certainly, like like uh, we certainly aren't you know aren't a game like Fortnite. We, we're not gonna have Travis Scott show up in the game. Uh, like it's just we're we're different. What we've been talking about doing is how do, how can we make how can we make events that bring players together that are uniquely Destiny and and what are those things? And so I think over the coming years we're we're gonna keep evolving that as we go. Like the the tech stack's awesome. Like it is you know it's a miracle. The tech stack's a miracle, and that we were able to pull it off with everyone kind of working from home. It's just an incredible testament to the team. It was awesome hearing Greenberg mention that, and you you mentioned that too. Like the you know it is a no one wants to hear from anyone who makes entertainment that it's hard, but you, everyone who's making entertainment, it's fundamentally challenging in some way that like you never talk about. And then doing it in a completely new context, it's even harder. Like the thing you're doing right now is fucking harder in ways that you know it's just. Oh not yeah, no, our you said our you said our teams and like doing this all from home, and it's you said it's we're all making it work. But I think you're right. The audience at home sometimes, even with all these press events has this expectation of like, you know, Allegra said, like, where was the wow surprise? And it's like sometimes those things were planned and then, you know, that team couldn't get it done and they're in another part of the world. And I think there's so many games even I know about that were going to be announced this summer that just like are not ready for whatever reason. And it's like, you can't blame people because they couldn't, you know, get the orchestra together to record that rousing score, you know, for the trailer or something like that. Yeah. So um, there are a lot of things that I think people have to, you know, think about. But I'll, I'll, I want to ask you this before we go, like, 
development, you guys had to push back a couple months. Like, um, do you feel con- you feel confident now? That, like you're able to figure it out. It's just taking a little bit longer. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. The extra the extra time is awesome for for us and the team. And you know, we are. Uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna use it to the fullest degree that we can. And uh, it's it's given us time to to work a little harder on things like stasis and you know try to get that experience of of playing through the Beyond Light campaign you know to, to the place that we want it to be, and also do all of it uh, while checking in remotely from VPNs. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, it's pretty fascinating what you guys have uh, been able to do. Well, we look forward to seeing more um, as you develop from home there. I'm sure probably have the game right up next to you. <laughs> yeah. Definitely to figure Time it out. But yeah, I love that you guys have, have outlined the roadmap. Um, we're excited to learn more about uh, Beyond Light and, of course, uh, the roadmap for, for Destiny. And love that you guys are, are showing gameplay, getting people excited. And we know you're going to have an amazing story. Um, we saw Lance Reddick recording in his uh, closet or whatever it was. I think on Twitter. Yeah, it's just it's like it's amazing, right? Like we like uh, we shipped a bunch of voice actors' gear and stuff so they can do it, and they're just able to able to jump in and yeah. do awesome stuff for us. It's tremendous. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Luke from Bungie. Thanks. Great to have you with us. Uh, we have some more coming up for you. Tim Schaefer will be joining us and other things. Uh, we're going to be right back after this. We just got to make a quick little technical switch and we'll see you guys on the other side with a little bit more of our post show. All right, we're back. Sorry about that, guys. Lots going on here. As Luke was saying, sometimes doing these things uh, from home. We have teams all around the country trying to pull this together. And I want to thank everyone, uh, both at YouTube and all our production partners, uh, to make this happen. Uh, not the easiest thing, but we are still, I'm still amazed we're able to bring 20 people together live and watch a press conference. So we're back. And we've got some more coming up for you. But right now, we've got an extended look at one of the games from the uh, press conference. Uh, Lauren said in the opening that the medium was something she was really excited about, and the team has been working really hard on that game. And now we have an extended look, an exclusive extended look at some uh, brand new gameplay of the medium. Check it out. Enjoy it. The Medium is a next-gen psychological horror game that plays out across two realities, our world and the spirit world. Thanks to the power of the hardware, you will be able to play in both worlds at the same time. Let's see how it works in action. At this point of the game, Marianne is searching the manager's office. We render two fully-fledged and visibly different worlds simultaneously, so you can explore the physical and the spirit version of the room at the same time, with no loadings at all. Thanks to the medium sense, you can see a secret passage behind the cabinet. Let's see how we can use the interactions between the realities to open the entrance. A 
As I moved the clock hand, I realized it was a junction between realities. Is that... Thomas? There! Looks like a passage. A spirit well. I could absorb some of that energy. Energy spots like this one let you recharge Marianne's psychic abilities. Okay, let's rewind to the opening. The entrance has opened in the spirit world, but the real world Marianne still can get in. Marianne's unique psychic ability, the out of body, Let's her leave her physical self to explore the spirit world more freely. Another of your powers is the Spirit Blast. You can use this energy against hostile spirits but also to charge up real-world electrical objects. Marianne cannot fully control her gift to live in two worlds simultaneously. What... what the fuck is this? Throughout the game, you will get to experience the worlds in various combinations. And you will never know which world will draw you in next. All right, there's a new look at the medium, which is great. Uh, we're excited to learn more about that title. And joining me right now is a guy you saw in the Xbox briefing along with Jack Black. Uh, he is working at Double Fine on Psychonauts 2, uh, now part of the Xbox uh, Game Studios family. Give it up for a true legend in the video game business, Tim of Legend, Tim Schaefer. Ooh, How hello. Going, Tim? How's it going? Hello. My head's bigger than what? yours. I don't want my head to be bigger than yours. There we go. Oh, yeah, gotta, we can. No, no, don't make you bigger. Okay. How's it going? Did you, what, do you, what do you think of the trailer? Give me your honest opinion. No one's listening, right? It's just you and me. No, nobody's listening. I thought it looked great. Well, it's fun because that song, we, I think last year when there was an E3, we, I think, teased a little bit of that with Jack Black that uh, we knew he was doing, you know, obviously he's a huge fan of your work and you guys have collaborated before, uh, certainly with uh, Brutal Legend and Broken Age, but. Uh, we knew he was in Cycle Knots, and now we got a, a better look at uh, what he's doing. So, yeah, I, I mean, this game looks yeah, so was, fun. I remember when we announced great. this. It was, uh, it was a Game Awards, what was it 2016? Or I don't even know what, what year did we announce it? Talk about how long it's been. It's been just a minute ago. It's, it's, there is no time scale. The backers the are waiting. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, it sounds like you guys are, you know, now you're part of the Xbox family. Um, you're working hard on Psychonauts. Uh, how, where are you at in terms of, of development of the game right now? Well, I have a lot of stuff done, but uh, a, a few things left to go, and the um, game looks great. It doesn't, just to be clear, it's not all as psychedelic as that trailer you saw. There's a lot of okay. crazy like, yellow submarine visuals going on, but that's just one level that's really themed around synesthesia and the overwhelmed senses. So... Um, uh, the rest of uh, the game looks a little bit more like it does when Raz is standing there with that brain in a jar. Um, and so that level is looking pretty good. And uh, we just really want to make sure now that we have the resources with our new partners at Xbox, like we want to make sure the game is as good as people are expecting it to be. Because I think their memories of the old game, uh, plus the new things that are capable of technology, mean that we have to really rise to the challenge of making the game amazing. No, and again, it's... As as your mind works, it's so vibrant and uh, you know unexpected uh, in terms of where things go, and that means a lot of art and a lot of uh, you know a lot of content. Uh, and you said, I love that you're at a point now where you know nothing has to be compromised. You can really take the time you need to to make the game you want. Um, I want to ask about you know this event, 
was a game showcase, but obviously there's a new console coming out this year. For your team, how are you taking advantage of, of Series X? Like what Psychonauts will obviously work on your current system and PC, but if people do have an Xbox Series X when they play it, um, are you you're gonna be able to kind of make it that much more sparkly? More sparkly, yes, it's gonna be yeah. much more sparkly. No, I mean obviously capabilities of, of of as far as the speed and the the quality of the the presentation. I don't know if I can uh, and that what I can announce and not announce. Well, let's say it's gonna be uh, taking uh, full advantage of what we can do with it. It's gonna be in fourteen K, right? It's actually gonna broadcast itself into your mind. That's I was something. Say, it's like it's something, gonna, something like shot right into your brain. Frames per second. It's like only yeah. yeah. And you're going to play it in your dreams. You're going to be asleep when you play it and dream the whole game. We're, re we're ready for it. But I think that's the thing is that your games have always, you know, had incredible stories and incredible worlds. But people, you know, I think the thing with this game that everyone's excited about is that the gameplay looks so varied and so fun. Um, how has how has it evolved over the past few years? Like, I'm curious, you know, are you, I assume you're somewhat content complete now in terms of at least, you know, the the story, like, are you still, are you still adding levels? Are you still writing stuff or you're done with that? I'm curious, like where you're at creatively on it. Uh, writing wise, I'm playing through the game and seeing where there needs to be a little more writing. Cause like the story all makes sense in my head, but I often tell it out of order and tell it bits here uh -huh. and bits there. And then every once in a while I'll be like, Oh, that's right. We never told the player this. And <laughs> so I'm trying to catch all those, those uh, last details. And um, it's really fun. Cause you can see, um, it's an easier point when you're looking at the distance to the end and you can see how much more you have to go from like a good game to a great game. It's a lot, it's a lot more fun to just yeah. get those last things in. I'm sure there's always last minute jokes. Although in this environment, like, are you able to do voiceover recording with people? Like what's it been like to, to make this game from home? Yeah, well, a lot of them, um, a lot of our actors have in home studios and okay. uh, we recorded with Jack from his house. You know, he did the last bit of dialogue, the, the dialogue that you'll hear in that level he did from his home studio. So, um, I mean, oh. uh, we're really lucky to work in games. We can do a lot of our work from home and uh, a lot of voice actors can do the same. It's easier to do that than go shoot a movie. I think. Yep. No, I said that's why there are, you know, lots of games coming out this year still. And uh, it, it's an awesome opportunity for our industry, I think, to be able to continue entertaining people with great content. And especially now with, with Game Pass and Psychonauts, I imagine, you know, this will be one of the most played Tim Schafer games of all time, just because, I mean, more people are going to have access to it through Game Pass. So that must, is that exciting for you and the team that it's going to open it up to a whole new audience? Oh my God, that's really, I never thought about it that way, Jeff. I'm that's really stressed sad. now. <laughs> the people need their games. We have to provide their home, their, their board, Jeff. Hey, it's, it's, it's high pressure, but high opportunity and really a ton of fun. Um, tell us a bit about, you said the level we saw was obviously kind of psychedelic, but talk to us about some of the psychic powers and, you know, people may be familiar with some of Raz's powers in previous games. How, how are you kind of taking those to the next level? And, you know, as everyone remembers from the previous games, every level sort of is, you know, customized in a way for sort of a certain ability or power. Um, so, Talk, give us a little preview of like what are some of the things he's going to be able to do with his mind. Yeah, I mean, yeah, every second ounce level is it's visually different. It's like this one off in some ways uh, art direction and whole different style. And the gameplay has a lot to do with the powers that are new in that level. And so we're bringing back a lot of the old powers that people know from the first game, like side blast. He can just shoot a blast of psychic power out of his head. He can um, has a kind of a psychic karate chop, and he can also levitate, and he can use telekinesis like he, he could in the first game. But you can see in this demo we're showing him one of the new powers, which is the ability to create a time bubble and slow things down in a very localized area because the character that Jack plays has lost all perception of time. And so we can kind of form the sense of time with his own mind because he's been alone in a jar for so long. And Raz used that power to slow down enemies so we can fight them easier, slow down, you know, platforms so we can jump on them and slow moving objects down to reveal secrets. And that's just awesome. one of the new powers, wow. new powers too. I was going to say, there's so much to this game. We can't wait to see more of it. Uh, and I guess we'll, we'll we'll just stay tuned for more details on all things Psychonauts, but uh, looks like a ton of fun in Game Pass. And, uh, you know, any year that we get a new Tim Schafer game is very exciting. And it feels like this is, it must be kind of, do you feel like this is your most ambitious game so far in terms of the scale and scope of it? I mean, it's the biggest game we've made in a while. Yeah. You know, after Broken yeah. Age, I, was, I really want to make a big world again. And uh, we definitely say, have I, a big... Back to Brutal Legend, that was pretty big, but it feels like this is approaching like that kind of scale. It's pretty big. It's got Jack Black in it. It's got... Uh, <laughs> um, it's very ambitious, but there's no uh, RTS elements yet. 
to say there's still a few months left in development. There's DLC yeah. or something, but yeah, gotta, it looks so fun, and I'm excited to see games like that. You know, Xbox keeps touting how diverse their lineup is, and I love that. You know, you're now making this game. There's Halo. There's so much else out there, and it's going to be, uh, as I said, I think your most played game and one of your most ambitious. So, Tim Schafer. I'm sure most of you are familiar with his work, but uh, Psychonauts 2 is going to be quite the experience, and we can't wait to uh, to see more of it. So thanks for joining us virtually, Tim, and thanks for all your Day of the Dead stuff this year, too. You've been super busy yeah. and uh, really excited. I was going to say, no. yeah, where's a Muppet, right? I've actually got a little, I've got a little beaker on the shelf back there. But, uh, yeah, that was say. fun. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Tim. Double Fines, Tim Schafer working on Psychonauts 2, part of the Xbox family now. And that is going to do it for our post-show. Uh, lots of great stuff across the morning here when you look at the pre-show and the main show. A lot of announcements from the Xbox studios. Um, and as you can see here, that amazing Halo piece that I thought was such a beautiful way to kick off the um, the briefing and uh, much more coming uh, from Xbox. Everwild, we saw... Um, you know, you think of across the portfolio, Xbox has a lot of first party studios. I think the big question everyone wants to know is how are these games going to play on the new system? Uh, and I think sometimes people fixate on the power and, and, and whatnot of these boxes, but at the end of the day, it really is about the experiences. Um, and Xbox certainly showed people a lot of experiences in a lot of different genres that are going to be part of the Xbox, um, plan. So that was their first party game showcase. Uh, as Matt, Pat, and others mentioned, there's still lots to share about Xbox Series X in terms of the hardware and the price points, and I'm sure we'll hear more about that in the coming months as we lead up to holiday 2020. And part of what's happening here with, with Summer Game Fest is that we've got a lot more to go in July and August, um, so there'll be many more streams and many more events, and you can sign up at summergamefest.com for notifications or follow this channel or follow us on Twitter and we'll update you as there are more updates on games. Uh, we'll be back with our big Gamescom opening night live show on August 27th, which is going to be uh, pretty spectacular with a lot of big games and exciting content on uh, on games. So we're, we're working very hard on that and uh, we look forward to bringing that to you guys. And of course, at the end of the year, the Game Awards. We're so excited about that show and working very hard on a, a plan to make sure we bring that to you in a big way uh, at the end of the year to cap off what has been a uh, a strange but also, I think, uh, important year for games to show how they can bring us all together. So on behalf of everyone um, that put this show together today, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank Xbox for the great partnership around this show, an awesome pre-show and an awesome game showcase uh, right here exclusively on YouTube. Uh, I want to thank you all for watching. I'm Jeff Keeley. We will see you for the next Summer Game Fest stream. Have a good day.